morning, and welcome to day one of the show beyond the show. As COVID continues to impact our lives, travel to traditional trade shows, meeting face to face, it changes daily. So we've decided to bring our brands and the latest product launches direct to your screens, and we're doing it live. I'm Brian Holdrich, Vice President of Sales and Marketing for the Americas at WellBuilt, and I'm kicking off this event for you, and I hope you enjoy the sessions we've prepared. Our motto, bringing innovation to the table, has never stopped. The challenges from this pandemic, as demonstrated with this live show, are products you will see over the next few hours. We know operators are continuously facing new pressures from every direction, like now. Space limitations, rising energy costs, labor costs, labor availability, delivery of product, and the ever-changing, ever-evolving tastes you and I have. That's what we bring together, our industry-leading brands and our premier digital platforms. A drive for continuous improvement in the kitchen, creating new opportunities. Our touchscreen controls create a simple to understand and common interface that creates consistency to every menu. And it's flexible, smart systems, fully connected digital solutions. So let's see what we have in store for the next few hours. Today's individual brand sessions are from Frymaster, Delfield, Lincoln, Garland, Combo Firm, focusing on new products. Each session will have Q&A, so make sure you log in, answer your questions, and we'll have some special things in the swag bag for you. This is streaming live, we're talking to a camera, but we're excited to get this for you. So thank you for joining us today. On behalf of WellBuilt and our brands, enjoy the live event and our new products.
right, Brian, thank you so much. And thank you to the marketing team for putting together such a fantastic video uh, that captures all of well-built innovation over the years. And, and I hope you're paying attention because as we kind of get closer to current time, you see more and more of these innovations kind of moving from the mechanical space, mm -hmm. right? The hardware space into the software and digital space. My name is Kirk Goss. I'm the Vice President of Consultant Relations here at WellBuilt, and today I have Jason Perrin here with me, and we're going to walk through WellBuilt's digital strategy, our common controller platform that enables our Kitchen Connect cloud-based solutions. So without Definitely. further ado, Jason, why don't you introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about what you do here at WellBuilt. Sure. Thank you, Kirk. So again, my name is Jason Perrin. I'm a program manager here at WellBuilt, uh, working in the Tampa office, and amongst the many programs that we work through in advanced systems is our common controller platform. So we will talk about this as we go through our next 10 minutes. Fantastic. So guys, as you noticed, there, there's a lot of innovation here. We've kind of progressed from analog control, simple push buttons, to a more advanced touchscreen technology. As Jason was alluded to here in our central uh, office here in Newport Ritchie, Florida, we have a, a centralized business model here within WellBuilt, which allows us to kind of press the pause button and look across all of our brands, the entire estate, mm -hmm. To, to take advantage of some unique opportunities. So about, what, three and a half years ago, Correct. Rick Karen, our Chief Innovation Officer, did just that. He looked and noticed there was a number of our brands kind of entering the touchscreen space and said, guys, we've got a unique opportunity here to kind of create a common user interface, a common experience for our end user operators out in the field. Let's take advantage of that. There's a number of advantages that that provides us as a manufacturer from a scale perspective, of course but also the end user operator. Mm -hmm. So, talking about the digital strategy, and as each brand progresses with their own identity, we have a phrase that we call born digital. Mm -hmm. Being born digital, each brand will then pause the button on their product development to understand, does this appliance need a touch screen in the first place? What functionality do we need to have on our screen? And how is it gonna be used in the back of house? With that said, then it's handed off into our innovations team and we develop their platform against this common controller. So it's a common controller, but we have varying sizes, whether it's a 10 inch, seven inch, or four inch controller. But what's important is that, again, common user interface and experience so that as you go and you train and you retrain and you retrain your back of house, it's just a common and enjoyable experience and it's Absolutely. intuitive for them to learn. But there's more than just the screen, right, Jason? Correct. So we've got hardware back here that's really you know, doing all the magic. So why don't you talk Absolutely. to us a little bit about what's behind there? Sure. So as Kirk alluded to, this is our common controller for the 7-inch platform, yep. uh, being a 7-inch screen. But what we really worked on is we, we met with all the brands starting three years ago. We looked at all the different types of uh, you know, requirements that are needed across all the brands. Absolutely. And we come up with a common set of requirements, cabling, uh, you know, user interface, software, everything that a touchscreen would need. Gotcha. So what you'll see here is if you look at the back of, uh, as you'll see in, in many of our other presentations, fryers, ovens, grills, it's the same touchscreen. Fantastic. And it's the same uh, hardware throughout. Gotcha. So it streamlines our, our supply chain as well. Well, and that's fantastic. So this device here is somewhat agnostic. It doesn't know who it's going to be until it grows up and it has yeah. its chip put in the back. It Absolutely. could be a Mary Chef controller, could be a Combo Therm controller, Link controller, what yep. have you. So exactly. the commonality of having that one part in the back of these service trucks going in the field allows right. us to inc you know, increase our first time fix rate. Absolutely. Number one, it simplifies service. And number two, it just increases the, the operator's uptime, which is absolutely, absolutely fantastic and, for sure. and imperative for us. So we talk about our digital strategy, being born digital, the device itself. So talk to us, Jason, a little bit about Kitchen Connect. What does the cloud mean? Right. What, what's, this is recording a lot of data and input for the end user right. operator. So how do we package that and what is Kitchen Connect? So going into this project, again, we had, we had two main objectives. One was common hardware, which you'll see. And again, board digital, right. the units come enabled already, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and Ethernet ready. So it, it's born digital from the get-go. Nothing else needed to be added. Gotcha. What we also worked on is our Kitchen Connect and really expanding the platform of our digital space. And what does that mean? Well, what that really means is there's so much data now. With all the technology advancements you're going to see over the next two days, you're going to see incredible advancements in technology in fryers and grills and ovens and refrigeration and whatnot. All that data 
can now be collected. And we can process that and make it really value added for our customers. Gotcha. So let's take a look at that, right? So for a lot sure. of our end user operators, it can be just overwhelming. Sure. They think about data, they think about streams of sure. Excel spreadsheets and <laughs> what kind of decisions <laughs> am I supposed to make off of yeah. this? But we take that hard work off the table for them with our Absolutely. cloud, with our platform and our dashboard. Absolutely. So yeah. let's take a look at that. If I'm an end user operator and I sign up for Kitchen Connect, what do I get to see? So what you'll see is if you look at our first slide here online, you're going to see there's three main points okay. that we can really address through our Kitchen Connect platform, and that's remote updating. So remote updating means, as you have with your iPhones you know, or your Android phones or whatever, software updates can be pushed to the device. We don't need service to go in and be able to update manually, so we save service time. We can also create menus offline and then upload them to the device remotely. That's fantastic. And especially in a COVID environment, that's really important. So the old days of trucks running around with thumb drives and a $200 charge to drive menu upgrades, that's it's over. Be a thing of the it's past. now pushed down from the cloud. That's Absolutely. phenomenal. Huge. Absolutely. Huge. And then what you'll also see is um, not only that, but you will have, uh, you know, in terms of food safety. Right. We'll have food safety that, you know, we can really keep an eye on and control. And most importantly, probably most importantly, is we maintain the equipment remotely. We can see all this data. We can then keep our uptime for our users Fantastic. and customers at a maximum level. Absolutely, equipment uptime is just absolutely key. So there's a number of innovations that WellBuilt has, has plotted throughout the, you know, their history here, this digital environment. And what I'd like to just stress to our, our viewers here today is, as you're looking in your back of house and you're gonna change out one piece of equipment or design an entire kitchen from the ground up, take a second, pause, and think about what's the digital strategy for that environment going forward, right? So if yeah. we're looking at old analog appliances, they won't have the opportunity to, to reap the benefits of Absolutely. these system upgrades, pushing menus from the cloud, and what all of Kitchen Connect can do. Absolutely. So we've looked at what it yep. is. So show us a dashboard. So let's go to sure. the next screen, if we can, and look at what that looks like right sure. there. So from a from a mm -hmm. operator level, say this is a store, there's so, multiple appliances here, so talk to me about it. So this it. is representative of an actual kitchen in New York City with multiple well-built appliances that are connected through our cloud. Great. So what you'll see here is you'll see ovens, uh, coffee makers, holding cabinets, and you can see them all, again, they can be seen remotely. You Fantastic. don't need to be in the kitchen to actually see Which them. Which we know in COVID, when service was limited and access to kitchens Absolutely. was limited, that's fantastic. So right. that was a store level view. We can see a few appliances that we kind of triggered an alarm. Right. So let's look at it at the next level. So yep. if I wanted to go in as an operator and look at that appliance that has an issue, sure. what does that look like? So let's go to the next slide and show our, our audience here what this is. So what you'll see here in this uh, additional dashboard, this is diving into a specific unit. Gotcha. So after we look at a very high level, we can look at everything from energy usage to yep. Uh, you know, uptime and everything, we can then look at specific components and see how those components are doing with respect to their useful life and at what point they may need to be replaced. Right. So, you know, service calls used to be reactive service calls. A piece 100%. of equipment would go down. Right, you never know. You'd have to have a call. Perhaps you'd have to come back a second time because you'd have to diagnose a problem and then come back. That's fantastic. Now we can look at these dashboards remotely. We can see which components are failing. We can then send our service fleet out with that component in hand so, so one time visit. So to reemphasize that point, guys, is if you're still in an analog world, you're never going to be able to move out of reactive service and into a predictive service format. You're going to have Correct. to have a digital touch screen of some sort capturing that data. Absolutely. Which is phenomenal. So how does all this data get to the cloud? Sure. I mean, let's talk about how, what's our model? What do we do as so Kitchen Connect? Looking at the next slide, you can see we've got our appliance, and again, born digital, so all that data is ready to be transmitted. Yep. It goes to our Kitchen Connect cloud. So what does that mean? Everybody talks about the cloud. We don't know where the cloud is. The cloud's just out there. Yeah. Well, we have our Kitchen Connect team that really drives this data with our customers. So we can take all of this data. We can create the dashboard of your liking. Fantastic. So we can create those things that you want to see, Right. and then we can go forward. So all of those solutions being there, trying to make it as user-friendly as possible, answering those questions, analyzing that data, bringing you yep. value-added information so you can run your operations as smoothly as possible. That's Kitchen Connect in the cloud. And as simply as we can put it. <laughs> phenomenal, phenomenal. Guys, again, my name is Kirk Goss. I'm Vice President of Consultant Relations here at WellBuilt. I thank you for your time. Stay tuned because we're going to start our new product showcases. And following myself will be Wendell Hayes and our Frymaster group, which we'll be talking about 
their filter quick intuition fryer, which by the way, is driven common. by a common controller. Thank you for your time and stay tuned. Thank you. Good morning, thank you. I'm uh, really excited to talk to you guys today and introduce you to Frymaster's brand new FilterQuick Intuition Fryer. Uh, FilterQuick Intuition is a product that we're introducing with the tagline, Superior by Design. And when we say superior by design, we mean that we're gonna be superior not only to our previous fr uh, FilterQuick fryers, but superior to Pitco's fryers and superior to Henny Penny's fryers. We've had a team of engineers that have been working on this project for two and a half years. And during that time, they took our fryer, Pitco's fryer, and Henny Penny's fryer, and they focused on three big design areas where we wanted to make sure that we have the best fryer in the world. The first one is around serviceability, the second one's around reliability, and the third one is around innovation. And when we say innovation, particularly we're talking about innovation around the touchscreen and digital connectivity. And so today we're just going to give you a couple of ideas or a couple of examples of what it is about filter quick intuition that highlights these, uh, these capabilities. There's way more that we can talk about in a short period of time, but we'll give you some examples to give you a reason to understand how this works. The first one, when we talk about serviceability, we started with components. What we tried to do was move as many of the components to the front of the fryer as, poss as possible so that you could get to them just by opening the cabinet doors. And ease of access was a critical thing that we really looked at on every part. We wanted to see you know, how fast could a technician access the parts and replace them and get the fryer back up and operational. To give you an example of that, we've taken one of our controllers and opened it up here. In our old fryers, if, in, in our competitors' fryers as well, if you wanted to get into the sensors that are on the fry pot wall, then you had to do a significant amount of disassembly of the fryer before you could even get access to get into the fryer. In these fryers, there's two screws here at the bottom. We take those screws out and the controller lays open flat and you have direct access in here to where those sensors are. The sensors themselves just plug in and so to replace those sensors, all you do is unscrew the bad sensor, unplug it, put the new sensor in and plug it back in. A repair event that would have taken over an hour in the past can now be done in minutes and get the fire back up and operational. Um, another example of both serviceability and reliability is the way that we've changed our blowers. In our old fryers, we had a really big blower that had to be cleaned by a service, te service technician once a year. And now we've replaced that with two independent micro fans that are variable speed micro fans. From a serviceability standpoint, you don't have to have a technician come in and clean those anymore. What we've done instead is we've created a filter that goes on the end of the fan. And that filter is something that can be cleaned, and it's something that can be cleaned by anybody. It doesn't require a technician to do it. On the filter fan itself, there's these two little clips. There's no tools required to remove this. You just push this in, and this slides right off the fryer. You could take the filter itself and open it up, go wash it out, clean it out, and then you just push it back into the fan filter and put it back on the fryer. So this is something that's really easy to do, and it doesn't require a, te a trained technical person to do it. In fact, the controller on the fryer actually tells you how to do it. What happens is that um, we're, we're using these air pressure sensors that are up here in the fryer. These are light sensors. They're measuring the airflow that's going to the, going to the burner system. And as that fan filter starts to get dirty and that airflow starts to slow down, we speed the fan up to compensate for the dirty filter. And so we're able to continue to do that until the fan gets to a high enough speed we know the, fan, the, the, the filter is dirty. In the past, we would have had a preventative maintenance schedule. We would have said something like, you got to clean the blower once a year. Now, we tell you exactly when you need to clean the, the filter because we know when it needs to be cleaned. And on top of that, on the screen, it tells them where to locate that fan filter, how to remove it, how to clean it, and how to put it back on. So we've made it super easy to do and now we're not using a technician to do it, we're using store employees to do it. These same microfans also create more reliability to the combustion system. Because we have the ability to control the speed and measure the airflow, we can always make sure there's a consistent airflow to go into the burners. But we're also able to increase reliability of all of the components within that burner system. Most mechanical components that exist on a, in, a, in a piece of equipment are going to wear out after a certain number of cycles. There's so many times you can turn them on and off before they just wear out. So if we can do anything to reduce the number of cycles, we're going to increase the reliability of the components. And that's what we've done with the independent microfans. 
What we did in our studies, we found that two-thirds of the cycles that take place on the burner system happen during idle periods when the fryer is not cooking. It's already heated the oil up to temperature. It's just trying to maintain that temperature at 350 degrees. In our old system, we'd have to load both blowers at the same time, so we are always running both blowers. But we don't need both blowers to be able to, both burners to be able to heat that oil and keep it at temperature. So now we're able to run one at a time and we alternate back and forth. By doing that, we cut down the number of cycles at idle by 50% on every component in that system. And because two thirds of those cycles are at idle, we're increasing the number of cycles we can do or decreasing the number of cycles so we can extend the life by 33% of each and every one of those components. So we've talked about reliability, we've talked about serviceability. The other big area we focused the team on was innovation. And it's part of why we call it filter quick intuition. The innovation is really all around the touchscreen and all around connectivity. Now at face value, the touchscreens are a capacitive touchscreen. They're much more durable, much stronger than they were in the past. And our old one, you might remember, we had the big face mask bar that was built around the controller to protect it from contact. With these, because the screens are so much more durable, we don't have to have that face mask bar anymore. But we also were able to do the same thing with the touchscreen platform that we were able to do with the Fryer platform. You know, with the Fryer, because we started from the ground up and redesigned everything around our, our design parameters, we were doing the same thing with the touchscreen when we created our new software. We have more experience with touchscreen fryers than anybody. We have over 24,000 touchscreen fryers that are in service around the world today. And because of all of that experience with all of our different customers designing software to meet their needs, we were able to redesign the software from the ground up to be way more flexible and way more intuitive. We have a ton of features within that touchscreen controller. And really, touchscreen controllers by themselves aren't that magical. It's the features that you build into the touchscreen that make the product easier to use that really drive the biggest value in the touchscreen. And we've been able to design those features in such a way in the new system that all of those features can be turned on or off in the software depending on what a customer wants. So you know, if we have 100 features and one customer only wants 30 of those features, we can turn 70 of them off and they don't even appear on the controller. They don't even see them anymore. It's that that kind of flexibility that makes it to where we can have one software base and customize it to all of our customers without having to constantly go back in and rewrite code. You know, everything about the touchscreen is flexible. You know, names of functions, our quick filter function, for example. If a customer wants to call it something else, they can name it whatever they want to. We can program that into the controller and it'll go by their operating terms, whatever they want to call their filter function. Um, same thing with the images that are on the screen. You know, in our older controllers, because we were button-based thinking people, we created these images that were a fixed size and you could only have 12 icons. Now on the new one, you can make those icons bigger or smaller depending on what your needs are. And because it's a capacitive touchscreen, now you can swipe the controller to go up and down and see additional recipes instead of have to, you know, do some sort of a scrolling function. It's more intuitive as to how that works. And then really all of that comes together into what I think is the biggest part of innovation around fryers for the future. And that's this idea of an automatic direct internet connection. Look, we've got 24,000 fryers around the world that have Wi-Fi capability. But today we only have a couple of hundred of those that are connected to the internet. With our new fryers, the filter quick intuition, when you turn on the fryer and install it in a restaurant, it automatically connects to the internet. 100% of our filter quick intuition fryers will be connected to the internet during the warranty period. And the reason for that is we know that we can reduce our service expense during the warranty period if we're able to see what's going on in the fryer. Because of our ability to do remote diagnostics, we can see every valve in the fryer, whether it's open or closed. We can see every pump to see if it's on or off. We can see what temperatures are inside the fryer. We can see every error code that's been triggered. We can see everything that's going on in that fryer, and we can figure out what's wrong with the fryer before we dispatch service. Then when we do dispatch service, we can make sure they have the right parts on hand to get that first call fixed right up. Those are the types of things that we're able to leverage with internet connectivity to really draw value for our customers. And then beyond that, you get into the opportunities where we're developing artificial intelligence features in a fryer. We're going to be able to do things like monitor what's going on in a restaurant, when they cook and how they cook, and decide exactly when are the best times to ask somebody to filter the fryer. We're even going to have opportunities to move into an automated automatic filter system where the fryer just filters itself. These are some brand new features that we're working on. And one of the great things about a connected fryer is, even if somebody is an early adopter and buys the fryer when we first release it next year, then if we develop a new feature three months later or four months later, we can push those features out to the fryer and they'll still get the latest and greatest technology, even though they're an early adopter and jump in on the front lines. Now, 
I don't have a lot of time left, but I do want to show you guys how we do a filter function. And this is just one more way that we've done innovative things around the fryer. We're going to go in here and start a filter function. And when we do this in our old fryers, you know, we have um, when we had a 4 GPM standard filter pump, and it ran at one speed. One of the things we did when we started thinking about how we could do filtration differently was we said, you know, hey, why do we need it to run at one speed? There's actually benefits to running that filter, uh, that filter pump at different speeds, and so we're going to have a variable speed pump, and we're going to decide how much power we want to give it. Our new pump is an 8 GPM pump, and when we start running a filter cycle, the first thing we're going to do is turn that pump on and start to agitate that oil so that we can loosen up any sediment that's in there. Now, you saw that and how much that oil was bubbling. That's running it at 2 GPM. If we had had an 8 GPM pump and run it at full power, we would have been pumping oil out of the fryer. It would have been dangerous. But because we have a variable speed pump, we can run it at 2 GPM during the first part of the filter cycle. Now, at this point in time, we're trying to let oil drain out of the fryer, so running it at a slower speed makes a lot of sense. And as this oil comes down and washes the crumbs out of the fryer, if you look down in the channel, you'll be able to see how fast that oil's coming into the back. And it's pretty slow trickle, you know, it's kind of just bubbling in. And once we get into the washing phase, we're then able to change the way we run the pump, ramp it up to 7 or 8 GPM, and start having a hard pressure spray. Now you'll see this come on as it does it, and the spray will start coming. And now that it's going fast, it's going to be able to push all that debris that's on the bottom and wash it out of the fry pot. Now I just want to pause for one second right here and want you to just listen. You know what you don't hear? You don't hear the filter pump. In our old fryer, it was a loud, loud noise when that filter pump would come on. You wouldn't even be able to hear me hardly talk right now. But with the new filter pump, even though it's a stronger filter pump and we're running it at a higher speed, we're running it super quiet so that it doesn't disturb operations inside the restaurant. Now at this point, we finished washing the fryer, we're gonna close the drain and we're gonna fill this fry pot back up and speed is the key here. We're trying to get that fry pot back up and cooking and so now we're running that filter pump wide open and seeing how fast we can get all this oil back up. As the, fry, as the oil starts to come back in the fry pot, we have sensors in there like our OIB sensor and our AIF sensor and we're able to sense the oil level coming up and we'll start to slow down the filter pump. And with the new filter pump, we're actually able to measure the, the draw that the pump has on it when it's pumping. And so when it switches from oil to air, we'll know exactly when it reaches the point that we're pumping air and we can stop the pump faster. In our older designs, in our competitors' older designs, we had to run that filter pump for an extra 40 seconds just trying to make sure that we got all the oil out of the filter pan. We don't have to do that anymore because the fryer is smart enough to know when it's out of, when it's out of oil and it's got all the air all the, out of oil and it's got all the oil back in the in the fryer pot and it can cut off that filter pump faster. All of that means that with the innovation that we've tied into uh, filtration, we've made a faster filtration system, we've made a better filtration system that's getting more of the sediment out there, and we're doing all of that by increasing the reliability of the fryer. These are just some of the examples that we have of the things that we're doing in terms of serviceability and reliability. There's tons of other things we've done. We've done some things to improve fry pot durability. We have a commercial coming up later that'll tell you a little bit more about that. We've done a lot of things on the reliability side with the controller. We've got uh, wiring harnesses that we put in here that used to, we'd have a lot of point-to-point -point wiring. Now everything's a wiring harness. Every wiring harness has a home in the system. There's cable channels that they run through. There's trees that tie them down and hold them in the right place. There's abrasion, resistive uh, sheath sheathing that goes around the wires to keep them from getting nicked or cut. You know, all of these things are designed to make sure the little things that were nuisance problems in the past won't be a problem in the future. Um, you know, with serviceability, another thing that we haven't talked about is just the idea that, um, you know, we're going to have an easier to access filter pump. We've moved the filter pump up under uh, behind the jib. You can take two bolts off the front and slide the whole filter pump out. And the older designs, there were four bolts that bolted them down, and it was really hard for technicians to access the bolts in the back. All of our competitors have four bolts holding that down. We've got two front-facing bolts that hold in the filter pump. You can pop off those bolts and you can slide the whole bracket off. So you can have the filter pump off in minutes and get it back up and operational. With all of that being said, you know, we, we just want to remind you why we say FilterQuick is superior by design. Ultimately, what we're doing with FilterQuick is we're making the most serviceable, the most reliable, and the most innovative fryer ever. This fryer is coming to you in the beginning of 2021, well, 2022. We're really excited about it. If you have more questions about it, then just please let us know. 
Um, there will be more resources available on the internet, and I uh, look forward to talking to you guys about it in the future. So um, with that, I think I'm going to turn it over next to Jeff, and they're going to tell you guys a lot about the future of how we make pizzas, right? We're using this kind of innovation with touch screens and connected devices everywhere, and this is the next example of how we're born digital at WellBuilt. Thank you. Thank you, Wendell. Appreciate very much the, the innovation on the fryers. Delfield, a leading manufacturer of prep tables, many years of doing this. When we think about prep tables, prep tables are really that, to make preparation to do the cooking aspect. Whether it's going to be making a salad, making a sandwich, making a pizza, you want to have the right piece of equipment in place so that you can prepare well, efficiently, and protect the uh, valuable cost that you have in the ingredients. So it's shown here, we have a Delfield prep table. This is a pizza prep table. It is using a raised rail system where there's a separate compartment for the uh, condiments in the top or the, the uh, ingredients in the top that's independently controlled from the refrigeration base. So you can have backup storage here in the base. Notice the nice cover design that is in place. It is, uh, doubles as an overshelf as well as that protective cover. So as we think about what goes on in a, in a kitchen, you've got a lot of air motion with a hood and the things that are going, you want to protect that area where that food product is being held. You want, don't want that to get too warm. So with the integration of the raised rail as well as that cover, now you have a really nice environment. Integrate the, the self-storing covers. They're out of your way. You're able to take them do a quick preparation for pizza. Notice too on the front of this, We've added a cheese grate assembly. This cheese grate assembly allows you to do preparation and it gathers any of that, that uh, food product that happens to fall off that pizza. You're gathering that up, it's keeping it clean. Here on the left hand side, we have a cheese guard. It's not gonna allow that quick action of the cheese being pl uh, placed to the um, unit or onto the pizza to take and fall onto the floor. I mentioned earlier it's a two uh, system, it has a top rail and a bottom rail, all using our Green Genius refrigeration system. It's environmentally friendly. It doesn't affect the environment. It's a natural refrigerant. Thus, it gives you good efficiency as well as reliability. In a good prep table, you're going to have the ability to leave the doors open, to gain access, to fill that unit up. But if you want to have that ability to close that door, now it's going to self-close. That's a great example of a, uh, a good use of a door. Also adding to the unit, drawers. So as we look at this prep table, we run out of the, the green peppers. I need to grab green peppers. Uh, quickly access that replenish. You're able to do that efficiently. Your, uh, your, your return on investment, your time, is being made more efficient by drawers. We have the industry leading drawers design. If you notice, I'll quickly take that out. We have one moving component. That is our uh, drawer slide. There's no rollers on the box. All the components is here. This is a um, no metal on metal contact drawer slide with Delrin roller, self lubricating. 10 year warranty on the drawers. So when we think about all that action, in and out, day to day, you want to have reliability. 10 year warranty on the drawer slides. We'll quickly put this back into place. Easy, cleanability, long life, warranty. Now you think about everything that is here. The Delfield prep table. You've designed what you need. One door, two door, three door, four door raised rail, whatever you might need for your application. Now you have the ability to have the perfect prep table. But how do we make this better? How do we make this a smart prep table? Patrick? Thank you very much, Jeff. Let me introduce myself. My name is Patrick Simon. I am the corporate regional chef here. And we're gonna talk a little bit about this Delfield prep table, which is using smart technology. So we're gonna look at here. So now every operator, every restaurateur knows that we have to have our ladles and our uh, tongs and all of our scoops portioning devices inside 
a typical prep table, but this being a smart table, we have the ability now to just have everything utilizing a very new and very innovative pro measure system, scale system that is can be integrated and non-integrated. You have the ability to be able to do both. So a non-integrated system we can have up and running in less than an hour. So with that, using a non-integrated system, it is going to have a touch. But if we do an integrated system, it is going to be a touchless ability. So we have the ability for the orders to keep coming in and the end user operator being able to prepare the pizzas to order. So with that, we're going to make some pizzas. We're going to simulate making a pizza just using a typical pizza pan that you would find. You can add a crust, sauce, whatever you like. Everything can be measured at one time, folks. Okay, everything can be scaled. The measuring device, our scale right here, is going to tear for the end user, so there's really nothing for them to do. So in this case, in a non-integrated system, we have the ability to use a touch screen. So if I touch a 12-inch pizza, it's going to tell me, the system is going to tell me to place a pizza on the scale. So I'm going to place a 12-inch pizza on the scale. Now I'm going to add one of the most expensive ingredients that are on a pizza is cheese, right? So I'm going to add the cheese to a pizza and then not only visually but audibly I'll be able to know okay that I have had enough cheese on the pizza now I'm able to take that pizza move it on down the line if we wanted to add toppings to it if we wanted to add sauce cheese all of those things we have the ability to be able to tear that scale we have also the ability to be able to add in your size pizza so anything from whatever you have from a personal, from an eight inch, all the way up to an 18 inch, 20 inch pizza, we have the ability to be able to do that for you. So now we're going to, in a touchless version, we're going to go into a, touchless operation where it's now visual. So for the managers, the owners, from across the restaurant, you're going to be able to see this screen. It is going to be color coded, so you have the ability to be able to see if everything is in red that's on my screen right here. Now, that's going to sh tell the manager that, guess what? I maybe need to get an additional person on that pep table because this person is really busy, can't keep up. But we can switch that. Once the orders are coming in, I'm going to reset this and we're going to be able to see a green screen, which is going to be the time zone. So from visually from across the restaurant, I'm going to have the ability to be able to see, okay, what's happening on my smart prep table. So with that, the first up on the order, the orders are coming in, okay, from a KDS system, a POS system. Now, okay, I can build, the end user can build those pizzas. So my first up is going to be a 12 inch pizza. I'm going to put that down. It's going to allow me the ability to be able to get in there, grab some cheese, some topping. Now it's already alerted me that I have enough cheese on it and it's going to remove, prompt me to remove that pizza to move on to the next one. We have the ability to be able to show how well I'm doing also. You can see on the screen here for a coaching and mentoring moment, we have the ability to be able to go back. The manager has the ability to be able to go back and focus in on, okay, the areas where we need more work. Maybe I added too much cheese. Maybe I added too much pepperoni. I'm able to focus in on that. The manager is also able to look at the stats. So in looking at the stats, I can tell by the hour, the day, the week, the month, I have the ability to be able to see what's happening. So I had a total of 10 builds, seven of them were on target, three were off. So I can go back 
to the individual that's working on my smart table and say, you're doing a great job, but we have three items that possibly we need to work on. So this is giving you real-time data to be able to pull off. If we switch over, we have a variance report as well too. All this information you're able to capture. So we talked about a little bit earlier about the full integration of this system. This is full-time data, full-time reports that you're able to pull off and use in the operation to be successful. So with that being said, I'm gonna turn it back over to Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, Chef Patrick. So thinking about the design of this table, we've got the perfect design, a design that meets the needs of the customer. Add to that the integrated pro measure system. Now you have the, the ability to take and maintain uh, consistency, control your costs. So truly now this is a prep table, a smart prep table, something that's going to be of a benefit to your customer. Exactly. So it looks like we got some questions that are coming in. So first question up, can I get the scale incorporated into the unit without a refrigerated catch pan? You want to take that, Jeff? Yeah, certainly. Yes, so as we see here, this unit happens to have a non-refrigerated, so you can integrate that. But if you'd like to have one with a refrigerated catch pan, we have those available as well. 48 inch, 72 inch, 99 inch refrigerated catch pan. What that means is it's refrigerated underneath these ABS catch trays. And that allows us to retain that product and potentially reuse it. That's great, that's great. Got another question. Can I retrofit the scale into an existing prep table? I'm gonna take that, Jeff, if Certainly. you don't mind. The answer is yes. In a Dell Field prep table, you have the ability to be able to incorporate in. Now we have another question. Does the screen require you to touch it while making food? Absolutely not, folks. Fully integrated systems utilizing a KDS system or your POS system, you have the ability to be able to have this in a touchless operation. So no, you don't need to do that. Great point. No hands-on, that's awesome. No hands-on, especially in this environment that we're in right now. No touching, you know, staying away from, you know, cross-contamination, definitely. So, another question. What's Green Genius? What is it, Jeff? I mean, what <laughs> Green is Green Genius. Green Genius is our in intuitive refrigeration system that uses a high expansion valve system. It's a high recovery rate. It's environmentally friendly using a natural refrigerant. It's energy efficient. It's green. It's efficient. It's Green Genius. Wow. Awesome. Amazing. So what lengths, I think you covered that earlier, but what lengths are available for this smart table? So I'm going to break this into two sections. Okay. In the refrigerated catch pan, I'm going to have three sizes. I'm okay. going to have a 48, a 72, and a 99 inch due to the fact of the configuration of the refrigeration. But if you want to have a prep table that's 39 inches, you want to have one that's 66, I can take and make it whatever size you need from a single door all the way up to a four door unit, 120 inch long unit, all with the integrated smart uh, system. You hear that folks? Awesome, you have the ability to be able to customize it the way that you want it, integrate this technology, this pro measure technology into an already smart table. So with that, we wanna thank you for your time and coming and joining us today. I know you're all very, very busy, but we thank you for the opportunity to be able to show you a little bit about what Delfield has to offer. Thank you, Chef Patrick. Now as we move on, we're gonna go over to Lincoln with Kevin Kelly and, Sh and Chef uh, Simon. Thank you, great job guys. Um, I'm gonna work here a little while with Chef Simon just to talk about some of the new and changes that came on to the Lincoln 2424. Um, as we know our Lincoln, we consider it the <clears throat> fastest cooking oven out there because of our dual blower system and Chef, so what, just so what we're doing here is we're taking the pizza that you just saw be made on the sport table that Chef Patrick made and they talked about. Now what we're going to do is we're going to show you the Lincoln system. So Lincoln you know, conveyor and pincher ovens, they've been around for decades. Everybody knows them. Everybody loves them. They're the super reliable. They're the technology that was the innovative technology. You know, so people ask, what is impingement? Impingement is taking a large amount of air 
and forcing it through small holes, which speed up the speed of the air and the velocity. What that does is it punches down through the cold bubble around food and allows you to decrease your cooking time and also increase crispness and uh, the browning of the food. So first thing we're gonna talk about here is we wanna talk about the new digital controller because I think that's the most important. Everybody has cell phones, everybody's used to touch screens, scrolling through, so we wanna make sure we're staying at the forefront of technology. So we come over here to our new digital controller. You can see we have lots of things right here. <clears throat> so first and foremost at the top you can see that we have, first and foremost you can see at the top here that it's 425 degrees. Now that's the temperature that we're using inside the cavity. So our 24 by 24 cavity is at 425 degrees. If you look to the, the next to it, on the top here is our top fan speed percentage. So it goes to anywhere from 40% to 100%. And on the bottom fan speed, you can see it the it, same way. So why is that important? Why is top and bottom fan speed important? Let's just take right off the bat, let's take this pizza for instance. So everybody kind of has their own way they like to cook pizzas. They have how much browning on the bottom, how much crisping on the, on the crust. So on a pizza, the most resilient part of that pizza, Kevin, is the bottom crust. It can take a lot of heat, it can take a lot of abuse, and it can, in order to get it crisp and brown like that. But all of your delicate features are on the top. So you have your cheeses, you have your pepperonis, you have your vegetables, you know, this day and age, people put anything on pizza, asparagus, salmon, all sorts of stuff. Those features and those ingredients tend to be a little more delicate and they can't react as well. So you can adjust that top and bottom fan speed so that you can brown a crisp on the top but also deal with those nice delicate features on can the I top. Can I ask how you did that before the controller? How would you adjust those speeds? Uh, the top and bottom heat? Was it with fingers? Was it? No, well before we'd have to do a finger adjustment. We'd have to do a full finger adjustment with it and we'd have to uh, We'd have to change the fingers uh, depending upon what we wanted, but the old school one, it was fast bake. So, and here's an instance I can show you. So we're talking about temperature. So this pizza was supposed to go through six minutes. Live TV, I made a mistake. So what I'm gonna end up doing here is I'm gonna change this to four minutes. And we're gonna put the pizza back in at the other end, being live TV. And we're going to increase the fan speed. So we want the bottom part of this fan to be 100, and we're gonna want the top part of this fan to be 60. So you can kinda of hear the fan speeds ramping up. We're going to put the pizza back in, and in four minutes, with a total cook time of six minutes, the pizza will come out brown and crisp. The instruction for this pizza says 16 to 18 minutes. We're gonna do it in six minutes. So on a traditional de deck oven, that you would see in a corner pizzeria, as chef says it's probably 15, 18 minutes. This cuts it down by 60% cook About time. that, yes. And a guy from New York that I love, it, we, I love my pizza, the great thing is that top and bottom control, midstream, you can adjust that top heat. So in case a customer wants a pizza with high water content, peppers, mushrooms, yep. you can just increase the top speed to get more heat on top. Yeah, so we can change it on the fly. We can actually have settings. We can actually have settings in the background that we can actually have different recipes for different menus depending on what you're doing. If you have a, something different during the day or at night. Um, so you can actually have these settings preset so that you don't have to have to worry about your staff chefing up the food. It can, it can uh, easily just be preset so that when the pizza goes in, you know when the pizza goes in this end, it's gonna come out perfectly at this end. So another great feature of our ovens, ovens is, is that we have an auto-reversing belt. What does that mean? So with the push of a button, we can go left to right or right to left, depending upon where we're at. So why is that important? The reason that's important is, is because restaurants are always changing. So one day, this oven might be sitting here, but with an additional piece of equipment or additional restaurant uh, menu items, you might want to move that down to this end. So what does that mean? So once the food coming back here was coming this way, now we need the food to go this way. With our ovens, it's a push of a button. With our competition, you're probably gonna have to send that oven or sell it or have to reconfigure your line completely or buy a whole new oven because that's how they come from the factory. 
They don't have auto reversing left to right, right to left. They come from the factory that way. So that's where the problem be. Or if you're designing a new kitchen, as we know, Kevin, when you're designing a kitchen, it, everything is perfect, right? Everything 100%, changes. Right. So the engineers and the architects put the plug here, but it ends up all the way down there. So what do you do? Well, with our oven, you just push the oven down there, you plug it in, you push your button, and it goes left to right, right to left. For the competition, you send that oven back to the factory, and you wait for them to send you a new one, which can delay your start time, which can delay everything, and most of all, it can delay your profits. So that can always be a problem. You know, talking to a chef yesterday, one of the most expensive things in kitchens and restaurants are the hood space. Can you explain our ventless system more and can we double stack it? Can we single it? What, what are the guidelines? Because ventless, as you see, we're under a hood here. You may not have the capability to be under a hood. So with the ventless system, it's a definitely a bonus for the end user. So our oven, this oven here, has a, a catalytic converter in the back. and. You know, catalytic converter, everybody thinks your car, your muffler. It's actually very similar technology. Um, what it does is it helps scrub out, it helps scrub out the grease-laden particulates. So as the air vents out, those grease-laden particulates don't go out into the atmosphere. As of right now, this oven we can have that's a single stack, a single stack oven right now. Um, in the near future, we're going to be able to double stack this oven, so too high, and it still be UL certified ventless. And on top of that. If your business dictates, you can actually stack this oven three high. Wow. So if you require that type of that type of cooking, that type of power, the unfortunate thing is under a three high, you're gonna to have to have it under a vent. Also, all of our all of our ovens can be either electric or they can be gas. The thing with gas is that everybody knows that of course will have to be under hood. There's uh, no amount of catalytic converter that will make that UL certified ventless. But on the electric, we can be ventless. Yep. And we can use it in front of a house for demo kick. Yeah, we can. You, oh, can that's, uh, you can put it anywhere. Anywhere you can find a 50 amp three-phase plug, you can put that anywhere that that plug would be. Okay. So, as with all of the well-built equipment, we try to back it up with a great warranty. The 2424 comes with a two-year warranty, which is probably one of the best, if not the best. It's unheard of. Industry. It's unheard of. And when the pizza comes out in a few minutes, a huge modern change we made was the door removal, and there's a reason for it. Up till now, as we know, to change a conveyor belt in a conveyor oven, you would have to work out to the side, right, Chef? Yep. And right now, take this situation where you may have a fryer or a combi oven, how do you get that belt out? So once we open the door, you'll see the door is removal and we'll be able to lift the conveyor straight out, make it easy to clean, make it user-friendly to clean. Don't forget, you can also get this a split belt. So what is a split belt? It's exactly what it is. The belt is split into two separate. So this belt itself is 24 inches wide. So we get 24 by 24. So we could have two 12-inch belt speeds. So we could have two different belt speeds. Why is that important? Well, not everything cooks at the same time. So you can have, add a lot more versatility to your menu. You can add a lot more features to your menu, a lot of things that you couldn't offer with just one single belt speed. We can see here our pizza's coming out and not through the magic of television, but through the magic of Lincoln, we have a perfectly cooked pizza. Now, if you thought this pizza was maybe a little overcooked, you can easily adjust the, thing, the fan speed top and bottom, nice brown crust on the bottom, nice brown cheese on the top. Okay, why don't you show them the inside of this oven. As we spoke earlier about the fingers, in case you don't know, these are your finger systems. So normally up till now, if you wanted to change out your finger system, you'd have to wait till the oven cools down and then pull each finger out and maybe put a larger one in if you need more top heat. Or maybe put fingers in with smaller holes for less top heat. You saw chef just change a button. He can do it in midstream. If somebody orders a pizza that's coming through and they want extra toppings and they have a lot of high moisture contents like peppers and mushrooms, he can kick it up to 70 and boom, he's got more top heat. We don't have to fumble with the fingers anymore. And again, I can't stress how much 
this removable door is for cleaning. Remember, if you make it easy to clean, you got it? If you make it easy to clean, hopefully your employees will clean it. So all we would have to do at the end of the night is lift this puppy up and take it out. Up until the removable door, as I said, and, and Chef said earlier about changing the belt, you would have to force this out through the side or there. If there's another piece of equipment or um, a refrigerator there, it's going to be very cumbersome, and then you're actually spinning the entire oven. So this is a great feature. We offer on other brands, which are other models, which we'll go through, but. Easy to clean, easy to maintain, easy to service. And that's the biggest thing, you know, you have to keep it easy for yourself and safer too. This is a lot easier and a lot safer to pull straight out like this with two people than trying to pull it all the way down the line. It could cut up, it could get hemmed up in there, it could get caught on the different fingers. So we, it could be a real safety issue, not on, t on top of the cleaning issue yeah. too. Yeah, you remember, safety is so big in kitchens. So. The, and again, the main thing is we now put the controls in a nice cool area. We're not leaning over a hot oven. We're not leaning over product. We're not leaning over food to change the control. 24 by 24 inch cooking chamber, split belt, control in the cool zone, removable door. What more can you ask? Yeah. So I guess we should probably take some questions now, right? Uh, some yeah, questions yeah, that let's came see up. if any are coming in. Uh, hey. Um, how is the 2424 different from other Lincoln ovens? And you may be the expert on this. Well, you know, it's the first Lincoln oven with independent top and bottom. And again, we've touched on top and bottom and why it's important. You know, the reason it's important is because you can be able to control that fan speed. You don't have to, no longer have to go in and change these fingers. You can go in there, top and bottom fan speed. Um, you can adjust the air, like I already spoke to, from 40% to 100% to get that perfect bake, top and bottom. Very good. Uh, let's see if something else there comes any other ones? in. Okay, what well, we went through this earlier, yeah. but it never hurts to repeat it. Maybe they missed the, the description of ventless. What does electric ventless mean? Well, we spoke about it before. Electric ventless, electric ventless is, uh, is the grease emission. We have the catalytic converter in the back of it. So during the cooking for a single stack right now on electric, it actually is UL certified ventless. Um, so we can put this anywhere, like I said, with a, a 50 amp three-phase uh, three plug on it. In the very, very near future, we will have, be able to double stack it and it will be UL certified ventless. And we're down to, run out of time here. I'll see if there's one quick one we can answer. There we go. And real quick, can the 2424 be available in gas and propane? Yes, it 100% can be gas and propane, but again, any gas appliance in your will be required to be under the hood. Uh, electric, our electric again, is UL certified ventless and does not require a hood system as much. One more, give me one more. What is the warranty on the upper end? Uh, That's you. All right, what do we say? Two years. Two year parts and labor warranty. One of the, if not the best in the industry, it's a feeling of confidence when you buy a Lincoln oven. So you're not just buying it, they're not just shipping it to you, we're supporting it with the well-built service team. So Kevin, let's pass it on to the next people. Oh wait, wait, we are That's the next us. people. So let's step over here to show some more great Lincoln products. Wait, as we're leaving, one came in real quick. Oh, does the uh, cooking performance compare to the Lincoln Fast Bake? So when we revolutionized the Lincoln Fast Bake, it was 30% faster than standard baking. Wow. Okay. So on top of that, now the 2424 is 10% faster than the revolutionary fast bake. So that means it cooks even 30 to 45 seconds faster than the standard Sweet. fast bake. So there you go. Speed, consistency, flexibility, and simplicity. So we're going to take a little bit more of your time, if you don't mind, and talk about the other great products from Lincoln. Uh, some changes that were made to our DCTI unit. and. As you see, the chef has a sandwich ready. Everything's good on this one. Live TV, you gotta love it. One of the things that we're looking at is, right now when you ordered electric equipment, it would always be, I, do I have 208 volt? Do I have 240 volt? What voltage do I have? So we actually incorporated dual voltage in the DC. This is the biggest thing we did. So when you're ordering your equipment, you don't have to worry about, is it 208, is it 240? Just order 208, 208 slash 240. And there's a reason for that besides ordering the equipment. 
I was going to say, talk about the mall when you put the yeah. So the malls. when you think about this, if you order if you order a 240 or 208, and your power is 208, if you're in a strip mall or a large area where there's a lot of people coming on the same power grid, restaurants tend to all open at the same time, right? All of them open at 11 o'clock and that's a wrecked place. So if you have two or three restaurants all in the same strip mall, everybody goes around, turns their equipment on around 10, 10.30, they don't want to turn it on too early. Well, that's a drain. It can be a power drain on the actual equipment. So it can actually make this, it make the oven, not this oven, but other ovens not work properly because it can't get the proper 208 voltage. With the 240, 208, with it being able to, to go back and forth, if you have a 240, this oven will easily adapt down to a 208. So the cookingness of it and the consistency of it will stay the same. And I can vouch for that because years ago I was a service agent repairing ovens and we would get calls at 1230 in the afternoon from so many malls saying that their equipment was in heating up and it was all because of an energy drain. So that's a great, great. And it's also a safety feature. Again, whenever you're ordering stuff and whenever you're doing stuff, no one ever makes a mistake, right? right. Everything's 100% perfect. So if this person, if you have 208 voltage and you get a 240 oven, that could actually damage the oven. It actually could ruin the oven. It could burn do a lot element. of it, burn out the element, do a lot of bad things to it. But with this oven, it doesn't matter if you have 208 or 240. It automatically adjusts accordingly that way. So I'm gonna throw the sandwich in real quick. So we're gonna do a cook time of about a minute and a half, and we're gonna cook this at 550. So the top range of this oven is 600 degrees. So what we're trying to do is we're gonna, we want stuff, of course, in your, in your restaurant, Speed and service is paramount nowadays, right? Everybody wants everything fast, they want pickup, they want it to go fast. So if you come down here on the controller, you can see here we have four presets. So right now we're on preset number one. So what I like to use this is different day parts. So if you have like a breakfast, a lunch, and a dinner, or maybe a specialty thing, you can actually change this oven. You can change the temperature, you can change the belt speed, and run the food through. Um, over here, you can see these are our, our time and our temperature. So those are actually what we can do to adjust these accordingly if you're going into a manual mode. Another great feature of this oven, and like all of our Lincoln ovens that we've talked about, is this button right here. This is your auto reversing, uh, auto -reversing belt. Again, we spoke of this. If it goes from right to left, and it goes from left to right. So no matter what, no matter where you put it, no matter where you use it, no matter where you need to change it to, anywhere, you can automatically reverse the belt. These ovens, you'll see them a lot if you go into convenience stores, um, small chains. It's an easy, simple, cheap addition to anybody's portfolio as far as it, equipment go. It's one of the most powerful ovens for its size on the line today with Lincoln. Hmm. This oven is also UL certified ventless. You can stack it too high, so if you needed to, if you started with one, if you started with one oven and then you realize business dictates that you actually have to speed up, Kevin, that you can actually add another oven right on top of it and it's still UL certified ventless. So you can stick it anywhere, anywhere in your restaurant. So the smaller kitchens, the smaller front footprints that are happening every day, mm -hmm. this would be perfect, or kiosks out front, out front of a mall, out front in front of your customer. Live cooking sells product. The smell sells product. So if you can do this in front of your customer, it's a benefit for you. And as Chef was saying, the cooking chamber. The chamber is 16 by 20, I believe. 16 by 20 is the And it can accommodate a 16 inch pizza. Yep. Which is your average pizza. And you're gonna do that pizza in eight minutes, seven eight minutes. Eight minutes, seven minutes. So through the magic of Lincoln, this is the sandwich that we just put through the impinger in a minute and a half. Now, we could again adjust the time, adjust the temperature, and we could actually get more of a brown if you like, or less of a brown. It just depends on what your personal like, actually not your personal like, what your customers like. That's really the more important thing right here. So we spoke about the warranty on the 2424. On the DCI, we pack it up with an 18 month warranty, which is still one of the best, if not the best warranty in the industry. We support the equipment we make here at Wellbuilt, at Lincoln. You're buying not just a brand, you're buying a company that supports it behind it. I know the chef mentioned it, but I'm gonna mention again, the ease of reversing belts. I mean, all he has to do is 
hold this and that belt will automatically start going the other way. It's All this is, stuff is made for your staff to make it easy on them to operate the units. And it makes it versatile. It makes it to be where you can put it anywhere in the kitchen. I know we harp on this. I know it, we're going to say it. And you're going to hear it because we're going to talk about another great piece of equipment from Lincoln that has some of the great features. But we're going to harp on this. It's, it's versatile. It's ease of use. It makes it to where you can put it anywhere in your line. It makes it easy for your staff and it produces great food. So why don't you tell us about the next thing we're going to talk about? So we got a couple of minutes left. So I'm going to talk about the Lincoln 1100 series, which is our la largest model here. And again, some new changes we made. Um, I know the chef spoke about the easy touch control that we did on the 2424. We now have it here. And the great thing is, I said earlier, we moved it from a hot location to a cool location. And for it's easier on your employees. They're now leaning over our hot surface. It prolongs the life of the controller that is not in a hot zone and their electronics, because electronics have tendency of scaring people that, oh, I don't want it near a, any heat source. But moving it into a cool zone, we have eliminated that chance of it overheating. And plus, one thing that I don't know if we mentioned was the ease of, is this the programmable? Yes. That so we have, so what we have right here, if you can look down here, there's a controller. What we have it in currently right now is what we refer to as manual mode. So this is where, you know, kind of, You'll see it. You'll see it on uh, some of our controllers where the chefs had it. This is where we go in here, and we can easily just program it. We can set it, kind of where you do some R and D from, where you do some different discovery work from, and then you can set these. So we can set these recipes. Once we decide we like one, we can set it, and we can change it to what we want it to be. So we've now officially saved that recipe on the board. Um, other great things on this controller is again, again, the auto reversing belt. We're going to talk about this till I'm blue in the face and I fall down. But all, like a lot of most of our Lincoln line, the auto reversing belt is right in the front. You can easily go into the back, into the background, and change it through a setting. You can also go in here easily and change temperatures. Go in here and easily change times. So if you needed to change times on a fly similar to our other ones, you can change the times, you can change the temperatures. And then and you can save it. And you can save it, and it's right there. It's right there looking at, and it's, again, it's your cell phone, right? Everybody has one, everything, everyone has a pocket. It's digital, it's touch screen. There's no longer analog, and it just makes it easier. It makes it easy for your staff to see it. It makes it easier for your st staff to go through it. And the simplicity of the c controls, I can't talk enough about it because of food loss. With the set recipes, you're not relying on the employees to make sure they have the right time, the right temperature, and food loss accounts for probably 20% of your kitchen expense. Oh, 20. Not more. 20 is, 20 is a generous amount. All right. And it depends on what industry you work in, too. I mean, think about, think about you when we were talking about the smart table right next to us. I mean, cheese is the most expensive thing you put on a pizza, and if you have a heavy-handed staff and all of them is falling down their side, then all of a sudden it goes to the oven and it's being blown off the top of the, you know, it's falling off the oven yep. and things. So, you know, food waste is the worst. So anything you can do to make sure that the food that you start with is the right food that you want to end with. And the Lincoln and Pinder lines, all of them do that. They're, they're, they're food in, food, food out. out. And you, it's consistent. Yep. Your customer comes back to you time after time because they like the consistency of your food. And that's what you're going to achieve with an oven. And you can put... It's not just pizza. We did sandwiches. Just quickly. We can do sandwiches. We can do seafoods. We um, we can do like shrimp scampi still here. We can do lobster tails still here. Um, only thing we recommend is is uh, not high fat food. So raw high fat foods. So okay. burgers and, and burgers and bacon and Flash chicken wings. Fries. Just because of the catalytic converter in the back. But you could retherm chicken wings in here. You could retherm burgers in here. You could retherm cooked bacon in here. And the versatility of this, because it has the, the door, door halfway through. Yep. So if someone wants something, if it's set on five minutes, and you don't want to go in and program it, and you only need two minutes, you can just throw it in here yep. halfway through the cycle. Or maybe somebody wants something more well done, and they take it out. Can you cook it a little bit darker? Well, if you put it in here, it may be too dark. So here you can just throw it back in the middle of the belt and cut that cook time down. Yeah, you can, and you can have it set up to where you know where it goes in here. So you can have items that take, 
the full time, I am to take the half time. This is actually called the half pass window, is actually the name of it. So, um, have we talked about the most important thing? No, we can go for it at the door. No, the most important thing is it's UL certified oh, ventless. There you go. Another ventless feature. Yeah, so we can stack this oven too high. We can stack it too high, and it's still UL certified ventless. And if your business dictates, we can actually stack them three high. So, let's show them the door. All right, as we said, the we love removable doors at Lincoln because they're easy to clean, they're easy to maintain. This is a removable door. Yep. And again, just like the 2424, we can easily slide this out, and it comes right out the front. Again, it's the easier it is you make for your staff to clean, the more likely they're going to clean it. The heart, you know, and it's also another safety feature that comes easily out and easily moved away. You're not needing space to the right and or left yeah. of this oven. You can easily put stuff right next to it. You can put a prep table next to it. You can put the smart table to the right side of this and, and you can easily move it. If they're triple stack, it's a little cumbersome to yep. spin to get belts out. If you're reaching so, to take the stack off, it's up in the air. But on this unit, I just want to reconfirm you need to change the fingers. You can't change the yeah, top so, and bottom. So this it. unit does reuse the finger system that we that Lincoln had developed and, and patented. Um, so what's in here right now is our standard fast bake, which is 30% faster than uh, the normal standard oven. So with this, we would actually have to change the fingers if we wanted different finger configuration, if you wanted to have a darker bottom mm -hmm. dark, and a lighter top. Fantastic. So, great, great. Let's take a couple questions real quick. Yeah, we're winding, running out of time here. Uh, and, and, okay, here you go. Lincoln two impingers with the easy touch control. Why did you make the change? And very common. They said, I like my old control. They're, they're used to. Everybody, used to. everybody kind of resists change, right? Yep. But with nowadays, everybody has cell phones. So, I mean, the new control is intuitive. It's easy to program, and it allows you to set, you know, 20 recipes all the time. Um, the change was really made because some of the parts that we use in our old controllers we're discontinued by our suppliers. So in an opportunity, we, you know, opportunity to use some new stuff, we actually moved towards that direction. And out of necessity, we decided to advance it to the future. And I think just by the demo that Chef did, you'll see it's simple, it's easy to use. Don't be scared by new controls, by electronics. Well, let's see if we got time for another one. Anybody coming in? There you go. Uh, Lincoln to impingers with easy tech. Can I change the temperature? Well, somebody missed this one. Um, can I change the temperature and time settings in the factory preset recipes? I mean, it's an easy question. Yes. You know, we it's it's your oven. It's we want the user to use it. I mean, it does come with does come with seven presets that are labeled one through seven, but you can easily change that time and those temperature settings um, through the easy control. You know, and again, you can also operate that oven in manual, manual mode. mode. So if you were if you were so inclined and that's what you want to do, you can easily do it in manual mode. Let's get one more in one here. More. Right. Let's see who's calling in. Here we go. Lincoln to impingers with easy easy touch control. Can I use the same time and temperature for my products? So the great thing about the Lincoln to impinger is is we have the half pass door that we talked about. So. You can use same time and temperature, the oven does cook, so you would find products to where you would use at one end, but also oven products that you could do at a half pass. So it really adds a large amount of versatility to that oven. So nothing's changed with the controller? No. Still, the oven's used still to their cook times? Or, okay. No, oven still is absolutely amazing. The controller just makes it even more amazing. And we'll try to squeeze one more in real quick. Dual voltage, the benefits, if we set it once, maybe they were in the restroom. Do voltage means you don't have to specify 208 or 240. The thing is, you just order 208, 240, and you're covered for the base of the... So, the Kevin, end. we're going to let these people see an ad by Garland, and we'll be back here in like 15 minutes. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Hi, this is John Lanning. I'm here today talking to you about the Cleveland Steam Chef Borderless uh, Convection Steamers. Um, we're happy to announce that all electric steam chefs, both connected and connectionless, now meet EPA 202 for ventless operation. Additionally, all gas and electric models also meet Energy Star. The model we are talking to you about is our connectionless model, the 22 CCT6. This has a manual water fill and drain. Simply 
pour the water into the front of the compartment here at the end of the day. Open up the drain, all the water enters into the sliding drain door. Another feature we've incorporated is our Hatton Clean Shield. The Clean Shield is a condensate drain pan that will collect all the proteins and starches from cooking. There's a drain back there, we'll send it down the drain into the sliding drain pan. This keeps the steam clean, eliminates foaming, cross contamination of flavor transfer. The other feature we have is our exclusive convection baffle system. This gives you a high velocity convection steam and even temperature distribution for faster and better cooking. The other feature we have on our controls is our Sure Cook Timer. The Sure Cook Timer is a low compensating timer that automatically compensates for the volume of food being cooked. This will eliminate guesswork and give you consistent cooking results batch after batch. And then our exclusive two-piece compartment door design and comes standard with a three-year parts and labor warranty. It has a free-floating inner door that automatically adjusts and seals to the face of the compartment, giving you an airtight, leak-proof seal. The gasket comes with a one-year uh, parts and labor warranty. Um, you can use it four times, the front, the back, and you can reverse it. Thank you. This is your Cleveland Advantage. Carrie Emmon here, Colpac Product Manager. As a food service professional, you make a promise to every customer that walks through your door. A promise to protect and provide quality foods day and night. Here at Colpac, we're dedicated to that same protection and trust at the center of your kitchen, so you can confidently provide your guests with nothing but the absolute best. Colpac has been devoted for over a half a century to creating quality products and solutions that can withstand all the pressures of your kitchen. All of our coal pipe panels consist of rugged, high-performance, soft-nosed polyurethane for superior insulating capabilities and cold storage. Let's take a look at Colpac's standard door design that includes an unseen reinforced steel door jamb, impact-resistant FRP door frame and plug perimeter, spring-loaded field adjustable door hinges, deadbolt locking handle, and a hydraulic door closer. For additional efficiency, add a cold pack air shield to keep the cold air in and the hot air out when the door is open without all the hassles of strip curtains. Cold pack, as well as all the well-built brands, offer a wide range of energy saving, environmentally friendly, quality features and products for all of your kitchen needs.
So we're back again. So third segment. It's like Kevin's last one for me today. So they only have to endear me one, one more, more one more segment. But you're coming back at a later date, right? Yep. I'll so be on later on today. For all the yos who might have just joined, I'm a Chef Simon Maple with Wellbelt, and this my Kevin esteemed Kelly. colleague, Kevin Kelly. And we're going to take some time to talk about the Garland MCO convection ovens. Um, as everyone knows, Garland has been a leader in convection ovens for years. Uh, you see them in ins institutions, schools, kiosks, kitchens, small kitchens. But through the years, we've done so many changes. We made it user friendly, yep. uh, user smart, um, trying to give you more capacity. And we're going to take about 10, 15 minutes to point out some of the features. Just looking at the outside of the unit, true stainless steel. But one of the things we realized, and this was feedback from Voice of the Customer Chefs, they like the wider handle, a wider cool touch handle. And that's because most chefs will walk through a kitchen with a tray and then grab the handle. They want to make sure that it's, no matter where they grab it, it's cool and that it's a large handle that they can quickly grab, not worry about burning their hands. Inside the unit, we're 24 inch cooking height. Now, you may say, well, what difference does that make? But 24 cooking heights, considering the standard is 20 inches, we give you now 20% more cooking capabilities. We can't say it enough, the most expensive area in any restaurant is under the hood. And what were we talking about yesterday? A How ten, much? A 10 by 10 hood costs ten thousand dollars, so about a thousand dollars a square foot, depending depending upon what you're what you're looking at. So, which it, is crazy. So. That being the case, you want to fit as much equipment underneath the, that hood and get as much production out from underneath that hood that you can. So when you go with Garland, we're giving you 20% more capacity. We're giving you six. What's that? Okay, another great feature, and we'll explain in a minute, is you worry about your employees, that they're going to leave the door open when you're cooking? It's going to tell them to close the door. So that was just an alarm to tell the chef to cook, who's ever near the oven, to shut the door. And you may hear that go off a couple of times as I talk about the inside. Well, and the reason you want that is because you want that door to be shut, because you want to save that consistent temperature inside. Um, you know, these ovens are multiversal. You can use a lot of stuff, and they're really good at stuff, but the door has to be shut in order for it to work right, to get that consistent product, yep. and you get that consistent food. So this is a feature Garland has implemented so that you can keep that consistent product. And also, it'll run your electric bill or gas bill way through the roof if it stays open and all the time. it keeps the employees in line. Even as a big, I mean, Chef said it just now. Once we went to a higher cooking chamber, we use a, a system called the Serpentine system. And it's a series of tubes on the side that brings your heat inside your oven up to about halfway, two thirds up. Now, remember, heat rises. And why do we do that? Why do we only bring the gas up to about here? Well, nat naturally, gas rises. So if it rises by itself, it will balance the heat on your top rack to the heat on your bottom rack. So when we say six racks, we say you can cook on all six racks. So top to bottom, left to right, front to back? You know, funny, front to back. One of the common questions I get is, why isn't the back panel parcelized? OK. Why isn't it? <laughs> right, because this portion the doors are stainless steel. So it balances the color. Now, porcelainized interiors, dark colors, uh, absorb heat. So if that was dark in the back or porcelainized, it may actually absorb too much heat and offset from the front. So by doing this, we're actually balancing the inside heat control. So an even cookability. Even front capability. And that's the objective with any, any convection oven. So right off the bat, 20% more baking <coughs> capability even baking, coved corners for cleaning. This sound, it, it doesn't sound like much, but if you have a convection oven that has square corners on the inside, those square corners are going to get clogged up with dirt, with, with crud, with, with grease, and then you're relying on somebody to go in there and scrape it and clean it out. So with the cold corners at the end of the night, they just go in with a rag, they wipe it out, Wipe off the bottom, they're good to go. And again, we, we talked about this, we've talked about this, we're going to talk about this, and everybody else is going to talk about this, and everybody you've seen is going to talk about this. The easier it is to clean, the more likely your employees will clean it. That's just, that's just a fact. There's the door yeah, alarm see? again. So the versatility of the oven, but one of the problems with any cooking equipment are the doors. 
The doors are the most abused part of any cooking equipment. And you probably Wait, seen... Wait, you're telling me kitchen equipment gets abused? Used, yeah. The doors <laughs> are the worst. And you've probably seen it in restaurants, and you've been working your whole life. People will stand on oven doors, range doors, to clean a hood. The convection oven doors, they'll be used in and out 100 times a day. 100 times a day. Constantly in, out. So we upgraded the chain mechanism on the bottom. We upgraded the gears and the sprockets on top. So we realized we probably now have the best door in the industry. So we're supporting it with a five-year door warranty. Five-year door. Now remember, the glass isn't because the number one breakage of glass. And then they do this. So always make sure your racks are in. Not that they would ever do it in your <laughs> kitchen, chef. No, no one's ever broken anything in any of the kitchens I ran. But we supported with a five-year door warm. So the great thing about the doors is, is you know, the ovens are so versatile and they, they work so well and they have so many purposes. You know, you might have it during the daytime and in the morning and in the afternoon, it might be your prep time. That might be when you're doing your prep work, might be doing your, your meats, you're doing some, you're doing stuff like that. But at dinner time, this might become a finishing oven. Right. Oh. This might be something where you. This might be something where you would keep skillets in if you had a Mexican style restaurant, or if you're doing a, a finished bake on something or a cheese melt on something. Yep. So, and you're turning this oven up to high temperatures. In that situation, this door is going to be opened every 30 seconds, every minute. So you want to make sure that this door is durable and can stand up to that abuse. I mean, I've worked in restaurants that have done 500 covers in a night. You know, 600 covers in a night, and on that type of business, you need to have a sturdy piece of appliance that can actually stand up to that abuse. And this is a 60-40 door. Yep. So if you notice, it's all, so this side with the handle is taking all the weight. Yep. So that's why we can give that five-year door warranty. And Chef brought up a good point. What happens if it is a finishing oven? And I'm in and out. Well, the more you open that door, you literally suck the gas out and you want to recoup quicker. So what we do is we offer standard, standard BTUs are 60,000, yep. which is excellent. But if you're using it for a finishing oven, ask your customers, what are you cooking it? Or is it a finish? Are you going to be in and out? Consider going to 80,000 BTUs, no charge option. We just have to do it at the factory before it ships. That's a good point. You, know, you definitely need to make sure that when you're when you're doing this and with any of our equipment you know you really need to under, understand our customer needs because there's nothing worse than somebody getting something and they're not using it to their fullest capacity for any of our equipment anything across the line so let's talk about the new controller well uh, as you saw on earlier on our presentation about our easy touch controllers Garland looked at it and said, hey, can we incorporate this? What great features can we do? I think one of the features you just saw was it now tells you, which we've never had before, that the doors are open. And remember, if that door is open, heat's coming out, it's heating the kitchen, it's, it's going up through the hood. So as we can go through here, we can adjust several things. First of all, we can adjust our, we can adjust our temperature. So right now it's off. The, oven, the oven's in, in a showroom mode, but we can adjust it to whatever we need to do. So as you can see right here next to it, that oven temperature, see how it's still grayed out. The oven won't let you engage something until you turn the fan on. You have to pick a fan speed, which we have two fan speeds with this one. So once we pick a fan speed, you'll see that the temperature turns white. So that means that the oven, and you can see the lines here to the left of it, that means the oven is calling for heat and it's going to heat up. We're in the middle of a showroom right now, so it's not actually going to raise temperature. We don't actually have any gas or electric to it, but we're showing the features. Another great feature of this oven is we can easily come over here and we can engage the internal light. So if we're looking in there. That brought up a good point. Look uh -oh. where our lights are located. They're located in front of the oven. They're lighting up the product when the door's closed. A lot of manufacturers put them in the back. Excuse me for no, putting in, but that's in, a whatever. great point. Anything I miss, so I'll jump in and cut me off. I got no problem. I've been, I'm married. I know what it's like, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we can turn the lights on and off very easily from here. And you can see inside the oven. The oven cavity is well illuminated. You can see everything that's in there. So if you're doing more of a manual cook mode, if you're doing, if you weren't using timers, you were just kind of watching the oven, you were kind of doing that. Maybe if you're doing R&D mm -hmm. and you had to see how long that actual thing take, you can go in there and you can easily check it. Get them under work. So we can go down here in our home seed. We're going to save that recipe. And you can see here we have some preset, some preset icons right here. So we can go in here and we can change any one of these preset icons. We can change the thing. We can also change the color. 
we can see all the different colors depending upon if you wanted a, a rare or medium rare or medium well. We can have the different icons for the different food. And you can see we could have the well done being black because whoever eats any type of roast beef, well done. done. Doesn't make sense. And rare, so we could go through and use these different icons. We can also save that icon. Now our recipe is saved into the back. Simplicity. Simplicity. We can go in here, we can go to an echo mode to where this oven goes down and goes into a lower temperature. So think about your air conditioning at your house, right? You don't go leave your house and turn the air conditioner up to 90 or turn it off because it, it's inefficient for your house. You turn it up to like 80 degrees or 82 degrees depending upon what you're doing. And then when you come home, you turn it back down to 72. The echo mode is the same way. It doesn't actually shut the oven off. But it brings the temperature down in a quiet point where you're maybe not doing it. Oh, maybe at temperature. like from three to five when you're not using the oven. And then you, at five o'clock, you hit the button and it becomes your finishing oven. So it's not pulling all that gas and not pulling all that electric electricity. And that has a cook and hold capability in yes. that control? So we can go in here and we can set a time for cook and hold capability. So it's going to count down to here. And then we have our cook timer down here, which we can set. And it'll start counting up. Yep. Shows you how long. Now, one of the features someone asked, which is a great feature, a probe temperature. Yes. Say you're doing a, a prime rib, and interior temperature of a prime rib, perfect, should be? 125 to 130. So say 125, 130. You set your program for 125, 130, stick it in the prime rib, and stick it in the, the probes inside the oven. When it reaches temperature, the oven will shut down and then go to a holding Yep. Room. So, I mean, it's a great point. I mean, it, prime ribs, all cows are made differently, right? Not, they're not, everything's not exactly the same. So you could have, you get a case of prime ribs in and you can have anywhere, you can have anywhere from a 10, 10 pound prime rib to a 15 pound prime rib. Right. So with those settings, you know, you want that food to cook the same, depending upon the size, you know, different moisture content, different fat content, blah, 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 all, all of that stuff. But with the probe temperature, 125 is, is 125 no matter what. is 125 no matter how big no matter moisture content no matter fat content and the oven will know that and it's the, the genius of the oven that will allow that to work that way and to where the food is cooked exactly the same way because the biggest thing with your customers is consistency you know they've had the prime rib last week and it was great and they want to come back and get that prime rib and it's overcooked or on the, and, they're going to be upset. and you're not relying on your chefs to do it and if you have to get pulled away or if an order comes in or something like that the oven does it all on its own. As I was saying earlier, we, we spoke, I can't say enough about how expensive underneath the hood is. So we have, are you, everyone knows the, the well combo therm. We have the capability of putting a convection on top of a combi oven. And we offer what we call bridge stand because we're trying to fit, again, a, as much equipment underneath that hood as we can. So what we do is we put on a bridge stand, slide the combi underneath, and then you can do what? You can steam, yeah. you can combi, you can drive. Well, don't take there. away that. That's a whole other presentation coming up here in a little while. <laughs> don't, don't take away from them. They, All right. They, I won't do any of the combi presents. So uh, let's take like one or two questions real quick in our last minute. OK. Why do I need these controls since my old controls were fine? It's the same thing. I mean, we've talked about it on Lincoln. We're going to talk about it all day. It's just ease of use. It makes it easier to use. People use their cell phones or people use these things. They're going to, it just makes the oven easier. Uh, you can pre-program recipes so that people don't have to chef it up, so to speak. You know, you can, as the chef or as the executive chef, come in, develop those recipes, develop those timings, and then your line level employees can just come in, press a button, stick food in the oven. It makes well, it really well easy. one of the things there, too, chef, is that with the old button to change temperature or the knobs. If they wiped it down yep. during the day, what would happen? So if we look, zoom in on the control, you'll see what happens that if someone happens to be cleaning the controller during a cook cycle, it's got a seven second clean button. They would just hit the little clean button and it's back. So do that again real quick. Hit the clean button. Now he can wipe down that controller and not change anything within the chamber. Again, I don't know of any other manufacturer. So we're giving you a five-year door warranty, two-year parts and labor warranty. Uh, we have a school warranty. We back it up with the warranty. We got 20% more cooking capability. We got, you know, cool touch handles. 
It's a leader in the industry. We made some great changes. Chefs love it. You'll love it. It comes in natural, propane, and electric. Single or double stack. So we'd like to thank you guys. Uh, this is the last time you're going to see me today. I'll see Kevin later. And I'm going to turn it over to the Tony, amazing Tony, Tony Jordan. Jordan of Frontmaster. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Appreciate the, appreciate the uh, introduction there. Uh, I'm Tony Jordan. I'm the director of field marketing for Frymaster. And what I want to talk to you about today are actually two of our newer products. We're going to talk about the Power Runner Fryer and then the new touch wheel controller that we'll be introducing in 2022. So first of all, let's talk about the Power Runner Fryer. So the Power Runner Fryer is our, is our newest addition to the 50-pound to the, to the, uh, mid grade fryer platform and what we've done is is that we've taken two of our two of our time tested models in the Dean product line the Super Marathon 50 and the and the Dean Decathlon 50 and we've taken those and combined the features of both of those into one upgraded version at the Power Runner uh, 50 pound fryer so what we've done is is we built it to be very versatile and very configurable so a much improved product line offering that we had before with the, uh, with the two Super Marathon and Decathlon. So you have now have the ability to have a single up to a four fry pot uh, battery for, for, this, for this fryer and you have the ability to add built-in filtration or have, or have no built-in filtration and that's with a single pot all the way up to a four pot. So you have the ability now to have built-in filtration on a single pot in the mid-grade fryer. We also have included four controller options. Those would be the millivolt, the thermatron, the um, digital timer controller, and the CM 3.5 computer controller. Other options that we've included that we previously kind of uh, held those back for higher grade fryers are things like basket lifts, um, rear and front oil discharge, rear or front oil discharge, wash down hoses, work shelves on the front of the fryer, among others. So we've, we've really given you the ability to configure a, a, much, a much better fryer that's, that's really for a broad use um, with, the, with the Power Runner that, that you don't have to go to a higher level fryer to, to use. So let's move on to the touch wheel controller, which is our, our newest addition in the controller uh, offerings for Frymaster and Dean. So what this does is it combines the functionality of the digital timer and the CM3.5 controller. We can operate it in three modes, either the digital timer, the programmed mode, which would be the computer style like the CM3.5, or a dual mode where you're able to switch back and forth. Um, in the digital mode, it, it of course includes all the functionality of the current digital uh, timer controller with the addition of being able to default to your most your, your, the item that you cook the most of. So let's say that you, if you have a French fry, that's your more common product that you're frying every day, so that, so that at the end of each cook, it would default back to that recipe's cook time and temperature at 350 degrees for three minutes. Or you can do it the same way that you're doing with your digital timer now, and it's gonna default back to the temperature of the last product you've cooked. In the programmed mode, you're gonna have all the current capability that's included in the CM 3.5, things like 12 items that you can, that you can pre program, um, things like setting the shake time, the hold times. It also has the ability for your sensitivity settings that goes along with your, with your cook compensation, probably better known in the field as stretch times. So you have all of those capabilities, but we've added uh, uh, some, some other functionality to that. So now you have the ability to also have actual characters and named recipes in the fryer itself. So versus the CM 3.5 where you had numbers available, you have six items with, a, with an R on the right side and then one through five and then an L on the left side, one through five. So now you have the ability, rather than just having a number and a button to push, you have the ability to actually name your recipe with six characters that actually spells a, a, full, a full name. Um, you also have the ability for this to come pre-programmed from the factory. So if you're a chain and you have multiple locations and you want them all to have the same programs, we can pre-program those from the factory. We also have the ability now to load with a USB. So you can actually create your recipes 
and on your laptop, download to a USB and, and upload your menus into the fryer via the USB uh, connection on the, bottom, uh, on the bottom of the fryer. So we also have the ability to plan, or we're planning on the ability to have support for six different languages. So you may have English, you may have Spanish, you may have French and other languages that we'll be able to, to go back into. Then we have a dual mode, which you can switch back and forth as you're, as you're frying, as you're operating the fryer. So let's, let's take a look at the functionality of the fryer. So right, right at this level, it's in an off state. We'll turn the power on. And you can see that you've got the, the, the functionality of the CM 3.5 or the pre-program mode. So you've got the ability to, to select your items. We can go forward selecting our items. We can go backwards and select our items. So let's start a cook on fries. Okay. Same functionality that you had in the CM 3.5, you can select multiple cooks. So then let's go and say, okay, I need to also drop another basket with some, with some French toast sticks in it. So I put that one in. It starts that cook, but you can see that it reverts back to the, on the, on the first timer that is closest to the end of the cook. That one will end, it will, it will have you take your product out, and then it will start showing the next cook. So let's show the functionality of the, uh, of the with this one in dual, dual mode, I have the ability to switch back to the, to the um, digital timer mode. So this one is selected at three minutes, which I have a pre-programmed recipe in for my most common product. I'll, I can, again, adjust the, or adjust the times frontwards or backwards. So let's adjust it back so that we can, we can show you how it looks at a, at a real cook. So we'll do it at 10 seconds. So I'll start the cook, and you can see it's going gonna, it's gonna to count down the seconds until it's ready to, to, for, for it to alarm and have you pull the product out. It finishes the cook, and you'll notice it tells you that the cook is done. Now, if you're familiar with the CM 3.5, cook was never spelled C-O-O-K. It was always spelled C-O-O-C because of the limitations that you had with your LED. Um, um, screen on your on your on your controller, so you have the ability now to have full words on your programs and a full alphabet that's able to to show. One of the things that I would point out too in the dual mode, <coughs> pardon me, is in the dual mode <coughs> functionality of the fryer, you have the ability. One of one of the items that we I know that we've run into in the past is that you had an opportunity in a in a programmed uh, fryer that you have all of these these recipes preset with temperatures and times and one of the problems that you might run into is if you have um, fresh cut fries that on fresh cut fries you need to be able to blanch at a temperature, different temperature and different time so that it was difficult for you to try to set that up in a recipe with the dual mode since I have the ability to, to go back and forth at the beginning of the day, I can switch it to the, to the digital timer, blanch my fries, go back, and then go back into my pre-programmed mode. So have a lot of functionality, a lot of capabilities with this, with this controller, and we're really excited about getting that into the, into the marketplace next year. Now, from the standpoint of the Power Runner, the Power Runner is available today. It's available in auto quotes. You can actually find it by type, typing in Power Runner as the as, as your description, or you can go in and, and, and call up each model number. The model number nomenclature that we've set up for the Power Runner is a, a first, first character space is a number. That would be the number of fryers in your fryer. So one, then PR for Power Runner, G for gas, 50, which is, of course, the, the, the oil capacity, and a T for a tube fryer. So the, the leading character would change two, three, four in the event that you have a double, triple, or quadruple um, fry pot system. If you getting it built in filtration, an F will precede the PR. So it's very simple nomenclature, very easy to find in auto quotes. It's available there today. We're producing these today and shipping these out today. Touch wheel controller will actually be available. We'll probably have some, some field tests. You're interested in some of those. We can look at those in the fourth quarter of this year. Um, be available for, for market use in the, in the first quarter of uh, 2022. 
So with that, let's see if we may have some questions that are coming up. Um, yes, we do. Uh, question number one is how soon after the rollout will the CM 3.5 and digital controller be discontinued. Well, we really haven't set a timing on that yet, but what we really believe is, is that after the, the touch wheel controller is, is announced in the marketplace and people start using it, they're not gonna wanna go backwards to the CM 3.5 or the digital controller because of all of the added, the added capability that we've, that we've included on that, on that fryer, so, or on that controller. So, um, Timing hasn't been determined yet, but we really don't see that being an issue as we go forward. Do we have any other questions yet? Um, yes, we do. Do we have any other plans to update or modernize any other controllers in the FryMaster lineup? Well, at FryMaster, we are continually looking at continuous improvement and improving our product offering. Improvements are also in process, that you've already seen earlier today, with our, with our industry leading touchscreen controller that's included on the filter quick intuition. So again, we are constantly looking at areas in our product offerings to be able to improve. Um, what are the benefits of the, of the power runner over the other mid-sized fryer offerings in the, in the market? Well, we have designed the power runner for versatility and reliability. From the versatility standpoint, the, the configurability the ability to configure with all the different, all of the different um, batteries of fryers, the built-in filtration or without, the different controllers, we've really been able to, 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 to be able to configure this fryer to be able to cook a large, broad range of foods, from French fries to bone-in chicken to specialty products that any, any customer may, may be offering. From a, from a durability standpoint, it includes, it's built around the time-proven thermotube heat transfer system that we've had incorporated in our Dean uh, tube fryers for decades. Um, when will the power runner be available to the general market, which we've talked about already in the touch wheel controller. So power runner is available today. You've got the ability to do it today. And then um, with the with, uh, first quarter of 2022, we're, we're intending for the touch wheel uh, controller to be available in the marketplace as well. Let's see, do we have time for any more questions? Um, we do. What is the warranty on these products? One year parts and labor for the fryer, two to 10 part only for the fry pot. Um, on the controller itself, it'll be a one year uh, parts and labor warranty. One more question. Is the fryer controller available internationally? We will have, the fryer will be available in North America only. That's our intent. Um, the controller will be available internationally, so it'll be a global offering for our product. So I believe um, my time's about up, so following this, it'll be a word from our sponsor. Thank you very much. fast-paced world that surrounds each Frymaster fryer, damage can happen as fry baskets wage war against fry pots. In traditional designs, the hard corner edge of the foam deck creates a single point of contact between the basket and the fry pot. Repetitive metal to metal contact between fry baskets and the fry pot can, over time, damage the fry pot and cause it to leak. The repair is expensive and often results in the purchase of a new fryer. To dramatically improve fry pot reliability, FilterQuick Intuition Fryers have been redesigned to include an innovative new radius edge that eliminates the single point of contact. Spreading the metal-to-metal -metal contact over 500% more surface area dramatically improves the fry pot durability. The patent-pending Radius Edge Fry Pot is one more reason why the FryMaster FilterQuick Intuition is the most reliable, the most serviceable, 
and the most innovative fryer ever designed. All names are given, but the great ones, they're made. Dependable. Powerful. Smart. Precise. A great name is more than a title. It's defined by character, proven by action. At Wellbuilt, we work every day to live up to our name. For something to be well built, it takes thoughtful design and flawless execution, focusing on the details and the big picture. And providing innovative solutions that push industry boundaries. The result, a full kitchen ecosystem ready to serve you. Ultimately, well built is our promise to you. A promise to keep innovating, evolving, and providing you with the best in food service solutions. We've been bringing innovation to the table for nearly a century. So when you see our name on a piece of equipment, you can trust that it will do its job so you can focus on doing yours.
I'm back. Kevin Kelly here again, but this time I don't have my sidekick, Chef Simon. But I want to talk to you today about one of the newest, most innovative products from Garland. Now that I think about it, in the industry. Up till now, we know that a 36 inch char broiler is one of the most energy consuming pieces of equipment in any kitchen. You can take a six burner range at 236,000 BTUs and a, a three foot char broiler at 100,000 BTUs, 130,000 BTUs, and the char broiler will use more energy. And that's because with most char broilers, you come in, you turn them on, and you leave them run all day. As well, when you get into a range, a stove, a six burners, you turn it on and off as you need it. So we at Garland Wellbuilt wanted to come up with a way to make that more energy efficient. Cost of ownership, cost of running your restaurant is so expensive. So what we're trying to do is how do we lower your energy's cost? So we're introducing the Garland XHP broiler. What we did was we took technology of three components, put them together, and we're able to see, achieve the same cooking temperature of 600, 700 degrees on a broiler, not at 140,000, not at 110,000 B, not, not, not at 100,000 BTUs. We can achieve those temperatures in a 36 inch broiler at 54,000 BTUs. That breaks down to 27,000 BTUs on each side. And you're saying, how is that possible? So our technology here, we incorporate three things. We incorporate a power burner, a blower, and a ceramic base. The ceramic base absorbs heat, and it throws it back into the, the cooking vessel or your product. The power burner produces a sharp flame, and when you incorporate any kind of air or wind on the burner, it makes it stronger. Think of it like a forest fire. What fuels a forest fire? It's the winds, the Santa Ana winds make them hotter. So looking at the unit, this is your basic, basic unit. Comes with a, a warming rack, um, stainless steel that's easily removable if you don't want to use it. It comes with some utensils like a grate lifter and a grate cleaner that's actually made for the top grates. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how the components work. So as I take these off, and I'll put them up there. Now this side we've had on for well over an hour. And this side's also, for demo purposes, I can show you how it works. But as I take these off and put them up here, you notice I grabbed those and they weren't even hot because we have a center divider. But if you look in close up to the inside of the unit, You'll see there's a power burner, your ceramic base, and a spark igniter. And in each corner, there's a port. That what that does is it circulates air around your flame. And you may be able to see on the hot side the flame actually circulating within it. So what we're doing is we're causing a vortex effect on a broiler. Maintenance is so easy. There's no greasy pans to take out. There's no dangerous grease latent pans that you got to walk across the kitchen with. As the burners, since it gets so hot, as the, any residue falls to the bottom, and this heat sink on the bottom is so hot, it turns to ash. That's it, it turns to ash. So at the end of the day, all they have to do is come in, Turn it off, it's, which I'll explain in a minute. Turn it off, wait till the next morning, lift off the grates, either sweep it out or vacuum it out. I'm going to just ask Chef, just for a quick demo, I'm going to have a chef come in and just throw a piece of some product on a hot side. Because of the vortex design, you're getting even heat, but the main thing is you're not getting any flavor transfer. So as you see here on the close-up, he's doing some salmon, he's doing a couple of nice steaks, he's going to do, looks like, some pork chops and some zucchini or squash. Again, because of the blower inside the unit, if you notice, we're not gonna get flare up. As any kind of flare up will quickly dissipate because of the blower. And because of that vortex design by, being made by the blowers, it's actually blowing the flavor around so you're not getting 
um, cross flavoring or flavor transfer. We'll leave these on for a second or two. I just want to do a demo. We'll just take off showing they get nice sear marks. At, as I said, this is 54,000 BTUs. He's cooking at 27,000 BTUs. And to be honest, it's not even 27,000 BTUs because he only has this on like level three. So right now we're doing all this food at probably about 18,000 BTUs. Talk about saving money. How does that transmit into your transfer into your wallet? Normally that would be money going up through your exhaust hood. But now doing it at such low BTUs, achieving the same goal, and to stand here, it's so cool. There's no heat being thrown onto your, your cook. I can put my hand right here, in here, and with this heat barrier, I can set them at different temperatures. If I want this on full high, I want this on low, it's not going to transfer the heat. And again, your, your heat sink base is going to go up to about uh, well over 800 degrees. Anything that hits it is going to turn to ash. So once you cover this fully in product, you're now capturing a blanket of heat underneath that grate, which is going to accelerate your cooking, less flavor transfer, and less flare-up. When I say less flare, you're always going to have a little flare up, but what, you don't, what you're not going to get is where you're going to have chicken that's going to get black and oil residue on it because as soon as that grease hits the ceramic base, it's just going to turn to ash. Um, I'm not sure when we, you know, if we want to flip these, if we, how long we want to keep them up there, but I'll keep them a little bit longer. So looking at the unit, it's a very clean European design that actually lines up with our traditional Garland GT series. And to turn this equipment on, super, super easy. It's like a switch. And if you zoom in, you'll see the little igniter start kicking on. You hear the igniter kicking on, and then the flame will kick on. And there's your flame. So now if I turn this up, I turn that all the way, we're at only 54,000 BTUs versus a traditional 130,000 BTU unit. I'm going to just turn this off for the sake of the video. The other great thing I like about this is the cleanability. As I mentioned earlier, at the end of the day, all we have to do is let it cool down. Come in with a shop vac, come in with a vacuum, um, anything we want to go in there, clean it, vacuum it out, easy and clean. We only have a 36 inch footprint. But if you go to the Garland website, there is a saving calculator on there. You can put the 54,000 BTUs in there versus other, and you'll see how much you can save moving to the Garland XHB broiler. Chef's going to step in. But this is Chef Sean that's going to come out. We're going to give it a little quarter turn here. Let it roll. You can see it's got a nice release on all the product. Now, as you see, he's touching the product, but we're not getting consistent flare-up. Flare-up will ruin your product. It'll coat it in an oily residue. It'll give a flavor transfer. It'll be sent back to the kitchen. So because, again, of that vortex design blowing around the air, around that product, and a blanket of heat under it, you've eliminated any chance of extended flare-up. Of course, you're going to get a second of flare-up, which can, you know, be good at times, but you don't want excessive flare up. It's a countertop unit. Right now, everything, is, all the, the models are on countertops. It, you, can't, you cannot get a range base under it, so figure in the future that if you want it, it's got to go countertop. 110 volt, natural oil propane, super to use, easy to use, turn it on, turn it off, that's it. The only real maintenance we recommend occasionally, maybe once every, I don't know, two months, three months, when they vacuum it out, the little igniter down on the side, maybe take some carbon paper, clean it off. Just get any carbon buildup. This is normal maintenance. I mean, the problem with our industry is that we buy a car, we run to get the oil changed every 3,000 miles. We get the antifluid, the antifreeze change, but no one wants to do maintenance on your cooking equipment. Take my advice, take it off, take a little carbon paper, clean that little igniter off, it's gonna last for years. Clean it up and you're good to go.
I'm going to ask Chef to just take these off, flip them over real quick, and maybe put them on a tray just to show the sear mark. There you go. Talk about a beautifully cooked piece of meat. You don't want these returned because they're overcooked, they're greasy. There's no oil from the salmon, which is a pretty high oil content product, if I'm not mistaken, affecting the pork chop or affecting the steak. So again, on the XHB broiler, you have 36 inches, 54,000 BTUs, two uh, sides, each one that's 27,000 BTUs. The Vortex system gives a very even bake. The, the couple Vortex system with the power burner with the ceramic base is the perfect combination to achieve those maximum broiling temperature. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to transfer over to our heavy duty line so maybe the chef can just take these off and put them on a pan for me. Let me just see if there's any questions. Before I go over, I just got a question. How much do we think realistically it can save an energy saving? We believe that on the XHP broiler, we'll probably save a minimum of 50% of 54,000 BTUs. You're, now I'm going to turn the, the unit off. Unit's off. You can go home, lock your door, worry about it tomorrow. Again, simple on and off. It comes with a brush to clean. That's it, good to go. It's easy on, easy off, easy to maintain, saves you a lot of money, and you, you'll make it up. Your ROI will be made up in no time. So to see if anything else is coming in. Uh, we did have one more question. Is there any recovery between the loads of product? No. Because of the blower system, because of the vortex, because of the cast iron grates, there is no recovery needed. So you can take product off, Put another piece on it. And as I said, you can put a piece of salmon where you just had steak, you're not going to get flavor transfer. So it's the perfect broiler, broiler for any product you have out there. Um, people say that unit tastes, you know, does it taste better coming off this broiler? Again, I just want to reiterate that because of there's no flavor transfer, you're not going to have any flavor transfer is not going to lose any flavor. You're not going to sacrifice any of your product. And the last question that came in before I transfer over to this is, why does it have a grease straw? Again, I went through it. Just lift the grates off, go in here, scrape it up, vacuum, put the grates back on, you're good to go. So at that point in time, I'm actually now going to talk about another product, a very, very exciting product that's long overdue, is the new redesign of the Master Series Garland Cuisine Unit. So Garland's been around, we know, 40s, 50 years, I mean, longer. And they've always had a brand in the industry that's always been best of class. So with the support of WellBuilt and the team at Garland, they decided to say, hey, how can we make our heavy duty line better? As we know, you go to a fine dining restaurant, the walls are coming down in kitchens. The cooking, watching your food being cooked is part of the entertainment. It's now part of the decoration in the front of the house. There's no longer front of the house and back of the house, it's a restaurant. So what we did decided to do was come up with a aesthetically European looked heavy duty cooking lineup but still with the Garland brands. So working from top to bottom, yes, you can get your normal high risers, single high shelf, double high shelf. That's always been there. But we came with the newest sleeker rear flue cover just to induce more air to help it vent better and operate better. But the biggest change, and the change that everyone's wanted is I want better, more cooking capability. I want better to be able to transport, transfer my pans from one to another. So 
As we come down, we notice that we have new heavy duty top rates. No longer do we have the rings and the top rates, we have the heavy duty top, top rates. And these are so engineered that they actually have a little thermal break here. And that's there for a reason. Because through all of our R&D testing, we realized that the top of the front reel would get a little bit hot because the cast iron top rate would press against it. So by putting that thermal break in there, we broke that heat barrier. And now this stays cool to the touch. So I love this line. Taking this apart, we have used and will always use our star fire burner. People say, well, I, what's the difference between a star fire burner and a round burner? Number one thing, when you're cooking, you want to make sure that as many of these ports with a flame under them are underneath your cooking vessel. So I'm going to take a standard maybe nine inch pan here. And if I put this right here, every flame on that burner is underneath that cooking vessel. And when you think about it, when you're cooking, sauteing, boiling water, where are you doing it? You're doing it in the bottom of the pan. If this was a round burner, that heat would be going up to the side. So we don't have anything in between the burner and the pot to take away from those BTUs. Excellent burner has been using it years at, at Garland and we're gonna continue using it. We take it, what also makes it so energy efficient is the top rate marries directly into, maybe I'll show it this way, the burner. So when you put a pot on top of your top rate, it's not pushing the heat down into the top of the unit. It's staying underneath your cooking vessel. And that's where you want. You don't want your, your BTUs going up through the chimneys. You don't want them going out the sides of the pan. You want them on the bottom of the pot. So this isn't just an off-the-shelf burner. I mean, Garland's been using star burners for years. But if we're able to get in here close, you can see on our Venturi, it's not an off-the-shelf Venturi. This is actually a ramped Venturi that when the air comes, when the gas comes out of the uh, vent, uh, gas jet, it actually circulates, causes a velocity that every port's the same size. You may have been able to see chefs and they'll be sauteing and one side of the oil is hotter than the other. That's because this is just half open section. We actually engineered it to be ramped to cause a velocity for even cooking. Can't say enough about this. One of the big things that, that we always had complaints about is, I hate my pilots, my pilots clog, I never get ignition. So we looked at that as an opportunity. And Garland, again, has taken it a step higher. We now have these little chambers in here that covers your pilot burner 110%. I mean, not 100%, 110%. So when I have this burner on here, no matter, let me put this back on. No matter, there's my pilot, you don't even see it. If it got covered in grease, if it got covered in water, it will never extinguish, never clog the burner. So again, that was the number one complaint we you heard from consultants and users, is that my burners are constantly clogging. So much effort and money was put into the open burners, I can't say enough of it. Going down a little bit further, if I take this out, 90% of your spills in a kitchen will go down your, your main burner. But you do still get about 10% on that back wall. We've all seen kitchens where there's grease and dirt on the back wall. Garland went a little bit further and they say, you know what? Let's bring the grease trays all the way to the back. So our grease trays go to the back of the range. I'm trying to take apart this range piece by piece so you can see the inside of it. So we have no clogged burners. We have a ramped Venturi on a great energy efficient star burner and we have stainless steel grease pans all the way. One thing that came up to us was when we spoke about grease pans, 
They said, why do we need this big 36 inch grease pan if I have a spill on the left hand side? So now, instead of one 36 inch grease pan, you'll get three 12 inch grease pans. You're covering your employee's insurance. What would you rather him walk across the kitchen with? A pan like this to dump it or a big 36 inch pan? Again, only, you only find this at Garland. Aesthetically, going down a little bit further, great European design. This heavy duty round belly bar is standard. The substantialness of this is European style. Picture your, your customers looking in and seeing this in your kitchen. We made it aesthetically pleasing. Went to a cast knob. Easy to read from across the room. You can tell this is off. This is on. The chef's leaving at the end of the night. He's across the room. He can look over and go, hey, that left burner's on. So brand new heavy duty cast knobs. You got your six burners. This pear shape or diamond shape one um, is super important because that actually shuts off your gas to this section of the range. Now people say, why is that important? Friday night, you're busy. A lot of people coming in. You're getting a lot of tops. Next thing you know, your oven needs a thermostat. Anything can happen. Somebody hits it, somebody breaks it. Service agent can come in, turn this off, and repair that without turning off all the gas on the line. So this actually is a nice feature. If anything goes wrong here, it can be repaired without shutting down your kitchen. Also, the reason that thermostats have tendency to burn out is that everybody turns them on and turns them off with this. Here, you can leave that on 400 and you can just, just do it on and off with your oven valve. We mirrored the new door handle to match the belly bar. So again, European design. We chamfered the corners to give it a sleek European look when two ranges are put together. Porcelain interiors, or we have the option of stainless steel. We can do a stainless steel interior. Now you look at it and you can say, wait, that's not stainless steel, that's porcelain on the bottom. The reason for porcelain on the bottom is we like to put bends in our, in our doors and our oven bottoms because that actually takes your product, if you do put your product on the bottom of the oven, it raises it about a sixth of an inch. So this way, there's no, you don't get overheating, you don't get flash, you don't get you know, burning of any grease. So we can easily transition a pan if we were from Oh, I got a real tied there, they didn't. But I can transition my band evenly into the bottom of the oven. One of the newest features, and with all the garland, with our heavy duty, the pan can go either way. It can go left to right or right to left. So we also, also add our convection oven base. And this is on a 36 inch footprint. The new Garland Cuisine unit will now be a 36 inch footprint. That gives us more versatility. BTUs, I don't know if I mentioned, we're 35,000 BTUs now. If that, that's standard in the industry, it's high end. If you want to go higher, we can go to 40,000 BTUs. So if you say, you like more BTUs, we can do a four burner. 40,000 BTUs per burner. Rule of thumb is 35 is more than enough because when you think about it, most people turn them on high and then they keep them on medium. At a medium, you're going to be only doing about 20,000 BTUs. So we're now 35,000 BTUs versus 20, the old 24,000. You have an option for 40,000 on a four burner. Great belly bar, aesthetically well built. Still, I know, I don't want to go out of the camera shot, but you can stand on the door. We've always been able to do it. That's what we grew our name on, is that we can stand on the door. We don't recommend it. It's not a ladder, but you know your employees are going to do it when you're not there. They're going to stand on the door to go get the hood. One of the newest products, since we're doing a range redesign, 
is a true plancha. Garland is now offering you a true plancha range. It has approximately a two inch grease trough. So it's a floating range. It's a floating plancha around the side with the heat management on the left side. Cook two 30,000 BTU burners, more than enough power you're gonna need for BTUs, but two 30,000 BTU burners. Cook in the middle, push off to the side, scrape, scrape the grease down, and here's your grease trough. Easy, easy grease management. I can't talk enough about having a plancha in line. So many people, you know, if, if you look up the definition, plancha is just a Spanish word for cooking on steel. We have it, love it. You're gonna be so super pleased when you get it. I guess the, the more important thing is what else is coming? You talk about these products. This is gonna be released shortly. That's why we're showing it now. That's why we're, we're really talking about it. But there's other things we're gonna be releasing. Start looking for garland pasta cookers. Start looking for garland, we have a fryer here. Start looking for garland built-in fryer systems with filters and filtration. And this is your standard fryer, but we're gonna have built-in fryer filtration systems. There's a lot coming down the pike. So when you partner with Garland, it's more than just your average partnership. You're getting quality and a warranty. We support it with a two-year parts and labor warranty. Again, pretty standard in the industry, but you're buying a self-confidence when you're buying. You're saying, I'm confident in this product because they are confident. If we were to go to a convection oven base, what sets us apart from any convection oven base is with our fan inside a fan, we actually pull air from the front and it cools the motor inside the convection oven base. And because of that, we're the only manufacturers that can put this on a curved base. It does not have to sit on legs, it does not sit on casters. You, if you want your kitchen to have a curved base so it's easy to clean, we're the only manufacturer out there that can put a convection oven base on a curb uh, mount. With that said, I'm just gonna quickly see if anyone has any questions because we're winding down. Um, the BTUs, maybe you didn't hear me, uh, the BTUs are thir on a 36 inch unit is 30,000. We have two H style cast iron. We love cast iron at Garland because cast iron's a heat sink. I spoke about that heat sink in the broiler. Well, cast iron on a burner, on a, any time, it's a heat sink, it lasts longer, it's more do doable and durable. Uh, is rare gas connection, uh, rare gas standard on all garland product? It is, it's at an option, you can price it accordingly in the book. And let's uh, if I place an order today, when can I get it? Approximately 60 days. And will we be filling in any gaps? These are coming in, I'm like reading them really quick. We will be filling in anti caps as we build the product line. The more that people are requesting product, the more we're gonna incorporate it. So with that said, I'm gonna turn it over to Deb, a combo therm, and she's gonna be speaking to you. Thanks for everybody. Excellent, well thank you so much, Kevin. Really appreciate that. And we are in the home stretch, everyone. So I need your attention for just another 20 to 30 more minutes. We're gonna talk about two new products from Combotherm, the Combotherm Max Pro, which is an upgrade to the Combotherm 4 tabletop line, as well as the new Ovair Blast Chiller, which is the Blast Chiller companion to the Combotherm Roll-In. I'm Deb Fryer, and thanks so much for your attention. If you need to get up and do a couple jumping jacks, you know, running in place, please feel free, but I promise you we'll go quickly and, and you'll learn some good stuff. Before I jump into what's new with the Convotherm Max, I'd like to remind everyone all of the great features and benefits that we already have with the Convotherm line. So first of all, we have the broadest line of any combi manufacturer globally in terms of every possible size. Every possible size that exists is in the Convotherm line. 
In addition, we have two types of controllers, as most competitors do. We have the Easy Touch, which is by far our most popular seller, and we have our what we call our Easy Dial. Our competitors also call that Classic, but those are very similar. In addition, and importantly, across all those sizes, we have both gas and electric in every size and boilerless or generator in every size. Now the exception there is our mini line. Most minis in the industry are electric only and the vast majority are boilerless. In addition, right door is standard. However, I will tell you our disappearing door, we sell many, many more of our disappearing doors. You can see the obvious benefits from a, whoops, a saving standpoint, um, a safe, in terms of space as well as uh, safety. You don't have to worry about burning yourself on the door. Some of the options on our line include Convo Smoke, which is a one-touch ability to add smoke uh, to your cooking methods. And we are launching for the first time a hot smoke feature. Historically, we've had just basically ambient smoke. Ambient smoke is great for things like cream and frankly water to do smoked ice cubes and smoked ice cream. And now we also have the hot smoke, which will speed up the cooking process during smoking. We also have Convo Grill, which is our patented um, grease management system, which works very, very well. In fact, we've recently rolled out in a large grocery chain and they are loving it. It's working really well for them and saving them some money on, on maintenance, which is fantastic. We also have corrections packages and marine. In addition, I would encourage you to look at our school packages, which are on auto quotes. They have everything a school needs to get started in terms of the right accessories. Our fry baskets are very popular for doing fried items and they're priced really, really well for the school systems. And we are the only combi in the country that has a three year parts and labor warranty for schools. So please do check that out. The other thing I wanna let you know is that even though we're manufactured in Germany, we were actually the first combi line in the US to launch the quick ship program. So we have a very large inventory of combi ovens ready to ship from Tennessee. So whether you're on the West Coast or the East Coast, you can feel confident that you're gonna get your equipment very, very quickly. So what I wanna do now is really share the general combo therm features and benefits. And by far, our biggest advantage is our advanced closed system plus. So what does that mean? That is really the way we are engineered, our cooking chamber is engineered, and it is proprietary to combo therm. So just to kind of bring it to life a little bit for you, most of our competitors, combi ovens, are built with an open system. And I'll give you an example of an open system, right? I'm in Florida, it's very hot here. I air condition in my home, of course, as probably most of you do. If, if my house were an open system, I would be air conditioning my house with the windows open. So as you can imagine, most people don't do that because it costs a lot of money, right? So that's very similar to most of the combis on the marketplace that have open systems. Combo Therm with its advanced closed system plus is more like air conditioning your home with the windows closed. So once your house gets to temperature, the air conditioner doesn't need to run anymore except for little bits at a time to make sure that temperature maintains itself. So that's one of the big benefits. And why does that matter? Why is the closed system important? Well, the first one is, just like with our houses, it delivers um, a lot of energy savings because we're only maintaining that. We're not having to constantly reheat that air. In addition, we have a sizable water savings, which we know is uh, extremely important on the West Coast. Also, no flavor transfer. And what I mean by that is you could actually cook cookies and let's say salmon at the same time or onions and when you taste those cookies you will not detect any of the salmon or onion flavor on those cookies. The other benefit to the closed system is very evenness of browning. So whether you have a full load, um, a partial load, but every shelf will have evenness and temperature browning and crispness across the board. And then finally, we are uh, UL listed ventless, no hood required, you heard me right, no hood required on our electric six and 10 shelf models. And even this configuration here where I have two, what we call 620s is also ventless without a hood. Now local codes always prevail as we know. 
The other benefit of combo therm, now that I've talked about the advanced closed system and the benefits of the closed system, I want to move on to our hands-free, fully automated cleaning. So the big benefit here for operators is your employees don't have to hand touch the chemicals to clean the combi ovens like they do for many of our manufacturers. With us, we have a li liquid cleaning chemical that is attached by a hose, and I'll show you in a minute how to set some cleaning up, but literally your employees just push a couple of buttons and they're done. They never have to uh, touch the chemicals, which is a big, big benefit. The other thing is we clean in about half the time of our competitors. So a full cleaning um, in a combo therm will take less than two hours. For some of our competitors, it's almost four hours. So that's a big savings as well. One more benefit I really want to talk about is our serviceability. It's very important. Uh, we are the only combi manufacturer in the United States that has centralized service dispatch. So what that means is an operator can call the kitchen care number and speak to a trained technician on the phone. During that call, they'll troubleshoot and try to do everything they can to fix the issue during that phone call. If they find a service visit is still needed, that technician from WellBuilt will dispatch that call to the FAS. And here's what's really important. When they dispatch it, they're going to include all of the notes um, that were taken, any error codes, and importantly, any spare parts that might be needed to fix that combo therm and get it up and running. So that's a great way to reduce cost of ownership and make sure your equipment downtime is really minimized. So additional elements in terms of service is we do have five service hatches. And why is that important? Because you want your technician to be able to get in and out and get to the parts they want very, very quickly. Some of our competitors, you have to actually lift the oven and put it on its back to get in through the bottom to reach some of the components. So that's gonna take one or two people and likely extra time and extra cost. Another service benefit is we have electronic components that are engineered with what's called Poca Yoke principles. And the translation of Poca Yoke is mistake proofing. So the great news is if any electronic components need to be changed, it's impossible to connect them incorrectly. So another great benefit. And then the final benefit from a service standpoint is um, our, our German manufacturing uh, partners. They did a great job of coming up with very few spare parts needed across that entire line. So for example, one core probe is needed across the entire line and only two motors. So that means when your technician shows up, they're very likely to have the right part on the truck. So that's a summary of all the benefits of the Convotherm line in general. And now what I want to do is focus on the Convotherm Max Pro. So the first thing we've done, get rid of this, is we have, um, as you heard earlier with the common controller across the well-built brands, we have adopted that. We've moved from a nine inch to a 10 inch screen, high definition with capacitive touch. So just like using your smartphone. And we've also moved up some of the important elements that were a little bit smaller and harder to find um, up to make it easier to locate them. So some of the features about the controller that I wanna share, and you did hear this earlier as well, but this unit is born digital. So it is fully Wi-Fi enabled. In fact, you can see right here the Wi-Fi indication that it is connected right now, which is fantastic. So here's how operators are using this capability, the Wi-Fi capability. A big one and an important one is updating cooking profiles. So for example, a lot of operators have limited time offers and if they're a multi-unit operator, it makes it really easy with a subscription to Kitchen Connect to be able to send those LTOs directly to all of their combi ovens right from their office. So we see by far that that's one of the biggest benefits. The second is pulling back HACCP data, which is important. Another thing they can do as part of that is they can see how often are the combi ovens being cleaned. Because we know that if you keep a combo therm or any combi oven clean, it's going to have a much longer service life. The great news is managers could then look at specific store locations and say who's doing a good job of cleaning and who might not be and put some programs in place to really enhance that. So some of the other benefits to being digital, um, the ability to monitor service issues as well as equipment utilization. 
a couple of other hardware features. And if you can maybe do, a, I don't know if you can get a good close up on this, but we have a Max Pro here stacked on a ComboTherm 4, which is not a Max Pro. And one of the benefits is we have added new LED lighting. You can see the difference in the brightness of the cavity here versus where our ComboTherm is today. So that's a, another big benefit. The great news too is when you open the door, that light's gonna turn off, which is uh, going to save some energy, which is great. The other thing I want to show is we have now launched a triple pane door. And one of the benefits that we see with this is when you pull out this first panel, it folds all the way out. And that's important because you can really get in there and clean both of these panels. Some of the competitive ovens that have triple pane only open about this far, so it's really hard for somebody to get into that very corner to clean it. Some of the new functions as well with the Max Pro is the ability to set cleaning reminders and also force a clean. So imagine you're an operator and maybe you want your employees to do a quick clean every single day and maybe our, a level four clean, the strongest clean once a week. And I'm gonna show you here quickly how you would do that on the controller. Before I do that, one of the, the great things is we do have cleaning reminders now. We set this a little bit earlier in the day and you can see as the operator walks up, they're reminded, oh yeah, it's time to do a water flush. So I'm showing you that part first because we had that set up for you to take a view. All right, so here's how you would set that up and I'll just do one just to show you how it works. So let's say for the daily cleaning, you would go into favorites, click the plus, and I'm gonna do a level one, and I'm gonna do that with a regular. I'm gonna save it. I'm just gonna put a Y in, but you can name it what you want. Oops. And, uh, ooh, sorry. And, and then you can see how you can save it. I'm sorry, I get, with the water flush happening there, it, it kind of, uh, took me offline. But it's very easy to save all different types. And what's important from an operator standpoint is they can really manage the water and energy use as well as the chemical use by setting up those custom cooking profiles. And the other thing I've already spoken about is we do now have hot smoke as well, which is um, a very uh, feature that's been, been requested. All right, so that is my summary of Max Pro and what's new as well as ComboTherm. It looks like we have a couple of questions. Um, the first one is, have the accessories changed for the Max Pro? The great news is no, they have not. And in fact, we're showing here that you can stack a Max Pro unit on top of a ComboTherm unit. So all of the internal um, equipment and accessories as well as the external stands are all the same. So that's gonna be great. The second is what sizes are available for the Max Pro. So it's basically the ComboTherm 4 line in the six and 10 shelf models. Those are the ones that will ultimately be replaced by Max Pro. And you'll already see that there are some models shipping already of the Max Pro. Um, the third one is, will the ComboTherm 4 be retrofitable with the new controllers? And the answer is yes. In fact, we've done exactly that on this bottom oven here, where it is a ComboTherm 4, not a Max Pro, but we were able to retrofit that with the common controller. Uh, one more question, will the Mini be upgraded? Yes, the Mini will be upgraded, and that will launch in 2022. We'll also have the common controller with the Wi-Fi ability. All right, so that's it on ConvoTherm Max Pro. Thanks for your attention. What I wanna do now is toss it over to Chef Ted, and we're going to talk about the Roland in Blast Chiller Companion to the ConvoTherm 2020, the new Overe Blast Chiller. So Chef Ted, over to you. Thanks, Deb. Great presentation on the new Max Pro. Uh, I personally am really excited uh, to work with it more and just explore all the new features and benefits that it has, not only with the hot smoke, but also the cleaning as well. Uh, I'm Chef Ted Speck, Corporate Regional Chef here at WellBuilt, and we're thrilled to introduce the new Overe Roland Blast Chiller to the U.S. market. WellBuilt is the exclusive distributor of this product in the U.S. Uh, we purposely waited to find a quality blast chiller like new Overe to pair with our ConvoTherm roll-in models. Of course, the pairing of a roll-in combi and a blast chiller is a must-have for large banqueting operations. But in addition, more and more operations and operators outside of banqueting are adding roll-ins for cost and labor savings for bulk production. Uh, for example, ghost kitchens, commissary kitchens, 
Uh, there's operators out there that want to do cook, blast chill or blast freeze, shock freeze, and then use that to, to, for a commissary to distribute to smaller kiosks and locations around. Uh, that way they're in control. And with the new over blast chiller, we've proven that we're able to have superior results in shock freezing and blast chilling products uh, to limit any kind of quality loss or yield loss. So being able to roll in to the next segment here, we're going to get this trolley out of here and roll back to Deb to take it from here. So the new Avair Blast Chiller was designed to go with our Combotherm Roll-In 2020. It's a great companion and as Chef Ted said, it's great for banqueting as well as for bulk uh, production, which is great. Now I want to talk to you about some really exciting features and benefits about the new Avair Blast Chiller. This has the most chilling capacity of any roll-in in the United States, any roll-in blast chiller. And we are selling this as a self-contained unit um, right now, so that's what it's available in in the United States. So our capacity is 265 pounds for a chilling cycle of 90 minutes, where our competitors are in the 180 to 220 pounds. So a really big advantage in terms of production capacity. In addition, it is now North America's fastest blast chiller. And there's really two parts to speed, okay? So the first one is you saw how quickly Chef Ted pulled out the trolley, gave it to me, and I was able to put it right in the oven. So even if, or sorry, in the blast chiller, even if this was full of hot food, I could still do the same thing. Many of our competitors, not the case, and I'll tell you some details here in a minute. So that's the first component of speed. The second is, once you have the hot food in the chiller, how fast does it take to get that temperature down to either chilling temperature or freezing temperature? So we're gonna talk about both of those right now. So as you look at some of the other competitors in the marketplace, a lot of their manufacturers will tell the operator, you cannot put the hot food directly into the chiller. You need to set it aside, set the trolley aside, and let it chill for, um, until it gets to 140 to 160 degrees, and that can take 20 to 40 minutes. So that's one component of speed. While others have to leave the food out before they can even put it in the blast chiller, with ours, you can go right from the combi oven to the blast chiller. And what are the benefits to that? The first one is um, not only the time savings as we talked about, but evaporation as well. So what we know is 80% of all evaporation for hot food happens in the first 15 minutes. So in the case of new Ovair, where you can put the hot food right into the blast chiller, you're almost virtually eliminating the evaporation stage. And what does evaporation drive? It drives yield. So with our competitors, I would say test them side by side. You're going to get higher yield when you use new Ovair. The second is bacterial growth. Again, we're virtually eliminating that step because we're going right from the convotherm into the new Ovair blast chiller. But with some of the competitive units where it has to sit out for a while, there's a higher likelihood there will be bacterial growth. Well, what are the issues with that? Obviously, we're all familiar with foodborne illness. We all want to avoid that. So that is a possibility with some of the competitive units. But almost as importantly um, is, it's going to affect the appearance and the taste. And as a chef, right, you want to put your best foot forward. You don't want to have the fact that your blast chiller doesn't allow you to put food in right away to impact the types of meals that you can serve. So recap, as we talked about, those two components of speed, that first one going right from the combi oven into the blast chiller. For us, there is no lag time, which is fantastic. So now let's talk about the second component, which is once that hot food is in there, how fast does the new Ovair chill relative to the competition? So what I want to do is show you a couple of hardware elements to prove to you why we are the fastest. So the first one, if you can get a close up on that, is we have the largest um, condenser evaporator in the, um, in the country. So you can see it's very, very large. It's 10 square feet, which is about 30% larger than our competition has. So that's a big component to being able to chill this down very, very rapidly. The second is you can see that we have four fans as well. And part of that 
um, drives the airflow. And we do have also the fastest airflow of any a blast chiller in the country at 9,000 meters per meters cubed per hour. The third thing is our electronic expansion valve is up to 30% faster than mechanical valves, which again, most of our competitors use mechanical valves. So re to recap from a speed standpoint, the new Ovair wins on two fronts. The first is the hot food can go right from the convotherm into the blast chiller. The second is once that hot food is in the blast chiller, it's going to be the fastest in chilling um, in the United States. So let me shut the door here. We'll talk about a couple of other elements before I shut the door. The first is that we have a monoblock design. So as you look at the interior, there are not any seams at all. And why is that important? Because having a monoblock design means that air can't escape, the cold air can't escape. So that's another way that we stay cold and are able to chill very, very quickly. We also have 80 millimeter thick, high density polyurethane panels, which also helps insulate the cavity. And also we have an auto stop feature, so when the door is opened, the fans automatically stop, so you're not pushing that cold air out. The other thing I want to point out is we have a stainless steel frame as well as doors. So that is also a, a differentiator relative to some of the other blast chillers that often use plastic in these places. And then the final thing I'll show you is our controller. So we do use a waterproof and dustproof um, grade controller. And it comes with 66 different freezing and chilling profiles. But we always like to talk about the quick chill, where it's very easy for a customer to choose whether they want hard or soft chill or hard or soft freeze. Some of the options available on the new Ovira Blast Chiller, it does come standard with a right door. It is also available with a left door from the factory. You can order it with either internal or external door bumpers. You can order it with an exterior bumper that will um, provide a maximum door swing of 95 degrees. And then I would highly recommend if you order one of these that you do also get the kitchen care installation services because that's going to really help make this completely seamless and turnkey to get it into your operation. All right, so that's a summary of new of air. I just have a couple questions. The first is, um, what are the electrical requirements and outputs? So this is 2083 phase, and it is 35 amps, and is rated at about 26, just under 26,000 BTUs. Second question, can it be used with speed racks? Great question, because not everybody's using you know, combi ovens and trolleys. So we do sell this in two models, both a trolley model, which you see here, which is open to the floor to accommodate the trolley wheels, but also a full cavity model, so you can use that with speed racks and bun racks. Final question, only compatible with convotherm trolleys. The, the answer to that is no, and if we can do a close up here on the bottom, when you order this, you can have an adapter. Could we zoom in on this, please? On the bottom here. Um, you can uh, change out the adapter so you can use it with really any brand of trolley that's available. Can you go down just a little to show the white? There you go. Thank you so much. So that's a great benefit as well. How does it compare with some of the other blast chillers on the market? I would say as we talked about the speed, that's a really important element. So if you simply ask, can the hot food go right from the combi oven into the blast chiller, that's a great first question because very few of them do that in the marketplace. And then secondly, how fast does it chill um, it, it, when I do put the food in and what is that, you know, the number of pounds capacity? All right, well that is all. Thank you again for your attention. Really appreciate all of your time. And with that, I'm going to throw it over to Chef Ted Boulet. Hey, as we said earlier, everything was live today. So one of our platforms this morning lost sound. Don't forget, it is all recorded. Please log in to wellbuilt.us.com to pick up on those two and a half sessions that we might have lost out on sound. Todd? Thank you, Brian. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you've enjoyed all of our de demonstrations and the new product solutions presented. Please give a round of applause for everybody here that helped present today for our outstanding team.
Thank you, everybody. So one item that we have not presented today, but we wanted to touch on is our kitchen care team. Kitchen care helps service, maintain, and protect your food service equipment as well as your facility. Kitchen Care offers installations, startup services, planned maintenance programs, and more. Not only for the products we've shown you today, but also our entire well-built portfolio. We hope you did get the answers to all your questions today, but today's event has been recorded and you'll receive an email shortly regarding its availability. If you weren't able to connect or not have your questions answered live, please do reach out to us via the sales contacts for more information. We have more exciting new products to show you, so please join us at 10 a.m. tomorrow, Eastern Standard Time, for more ses sessions and demonstrations. So remember that by choosing well-built equipment, you're part of our family. Thank you, and have a great afternoon. Woo! Thank you, everybody. <laughs>